T Sports Special. Live from New Orleans, Louisiana, the 41st annual Sugar Bowl featuring the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Florida Gators. This ABC Sports Exclusive is brought to you by Cotton Incorporated, the research and marketing company representing America's cotton producers. Comfortable cotton, it's a natural wonder. And by Chevrolet, you're invited to see Chevy's lineup for 1975 at your Chevy dealers now. Chevrolet makes sense for America. And by Delco and your local Delco dealers nationwide who sell and install quality Delco replacement parts for your car. Well, this is the famous Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana, and here come the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And from the other corner, the Florida Gators. The trophy for the winning team and the lovely queen, Rebecca Causey. You see four important elements that will be combined on this New Year's Eve evening in New Orleans, Louisiana, for the 41st annual Sugar Bowl Football Classic. Nebraska, 8-3 on the year. Florida, 8-3 on the year. The Huskers out of the Big 8 Conference. The Gators out of the Southeastern Conference. The first time these two teams have ever met. The second trip to the Sugar Bowl for each of the teams, and both lost in their only appearance here. Nebraska tonight will be trying for their sixth consecutive bowl win and a happy new year to everybody everywhere. I'm Keith Jackson and I hope you'll pardon a little bit of embellishment on what might be called a, a fancy pair of overalls down here in the southern part of the United States tonight, but it's a most festive evening in the city of New Orleans as the Midwinter Sports Committee has put together another extravaganza. Thousands and thousands of people having come down from Nebraska Thousands have come over from Florida, and an awful lot of people who just wanted to come see a great football game have come, including this very dapper young man to my right, the head football coach at the University of Oklahoma, and all you Oklahomans, Nebraskans, and folks down in Arkansas, take just a moment and slap your knee. Here he is, Barry Switzer. I do think we look kind of pretty, don't you, Keith? Barry Lacewell, your assistant head coach, said he thought all members of the staff ought to have those for free game dinners on Friday night. Well, they know I don't have this hanging in my closet at home. I had rented this yesterday, and a guy from Goaty Bowl, Oklahoma, knows that. Let's talk about the ball game. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, an arch rival of the Oklahoma Sooners. Your team beat them this year, but it's a good football team. Right. Uh, Nebraska has always been a great football team. They're a great tradition like the University of Oklahoma, uh, Keith. Uh, they're led by the great quarterback, David Humley, All-American, who I'm very happy to see graduate this year. He's a tremendous quarterback, and that's one thing that Florida will have to contend with tonight. David Hum is a great passer. He throws well. He sets up very quickly. He gets rid of the ball extremely fast. And he's got some fine receivers to throw to, especially uh, Donnie Westbrook, who is probably uh, the closest thing they've had to Johnny Rogers uh, in a couple of years. Of course, he only left there a couple of years ago. Now, Florida. Can Florida, out of the wishbone, move the ball against this Nebraska black-shirted defense? Well, I tell you, if you're going to have success against Nebraska, you're going to have to move the football. They are a big, physical, awesome football team. I talked to the Florida coaches today, Keith, and they said without question this is the biggest football team that they've ever played. Uh, they're huge up front. Fine linebackers in the 230 class. They're all the down people are 250 to 260. And, and uh, you've got a long afternoon butting these people out of there because it's a test for you. And the key thing, I think, in the ball game is how well they block Lee, the nose guard. Because in the wishbone offense, the harder your offense is the fullback play, you've got to get a tie or stand off sometimes with nose guard and win sometimes to move the ball consistently. And, of course, how Florida plays defense to keep home from nibbling at him, nibbling at him. He doesn't get too hungry. He just sits out and picks you a little bit at a time. Well, he, uh, first of all, they do a great job with their offense. They're probably one of the finest uh, sophisticated types of offenses in the country. And throwing the football, they use a lot of various formations. They uh, move a lot of people around and hum automatics quite a bit in the during the ball game. Okay. We'll have some more from Barry Switzer of Oklahoma later. Right now, let's join the Sea Chanters out of Washington, D.C. and the U.S. Navy Band and our National Anthem.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing from the University of Nebraska some outstanding seniors who will be playing their final game tonight in the colors of the Big Red. Number 68 from Omaha, defensive left end Tom Pate. Number 45 from Bloomington, Minnesota, strong linebacker Tom Rood, captain. Number 57 from Stillwater, Minnesota, weak linebacker Bob Nelson. Number 29 from Chillicothe, Missouri, left cornerback Ardell Johnson. Number 18 from Grand Island, Nebraska, safety George Kairos. Number 71 from Whittier, California, offensive tackle Mark Doak. Number 63 from Flint, Michigan, left guard Tom Allward. Number 64 from Lincoln, Nebraska, offensive right guard Stan Hegner. Number 73 from Toledo, Ohio, right tackle Marvin Crenshaw. Number 24 from Fremont, Nebraska, split in Rich Spaugh. Number 21 from Cheyenne, Wyoming, wingback Don Westbrook. Number 12, from Las Vegas, Nevada, quarterback, offensive captain, David Hum. And the head coach of the Cornhuskers, Tom Osborne. Now introducing the University of Florida Gators, some top offensive and defensive players. Number 67, from Jacksonville, Florida, defensive tackle, Daryl Carpenter. Number 99 from Fort Meade, Florida, middle guard, Sammy Green. Number 78 from Baker, Florida, defensive tackle, Clint Griffith. Number 55 from Coral Gables, linebacker, Ralph Ortega. Number 43 from Coral Gables, linebacker, Glenn Cameron. Number 35 from Sarasota, fullback, Jimmy Dubose. Number 31 from Marietta, Georgia, running back James Richards. Number 33 from Sarasota, running back Tony Green. Number 8 from Jacksonville, quarterback Don Gaffney. Number 25 from Tampa, split in Lee McGriff. And the head coach of the Florida Gators, Doug Dickey. The 41st Sugar Bowl Football Classic in a moment. Well, the old Crescent City is really humming on a New Year's Eve, and we're delighted you could join us here on ABC as Nebraska will receive, having won the toss in this 41st annual Sugar Bowl Football Classic. The split in as Nebraska goes on offense will be Bar number 24. The tackle on the left side will be Doak alongside of Allward the guard, Rick Bonas in the middle, number 54, Hegner on the right side along with Crenshaw and Mushinsky, number 88 will be the tight end. The quarterback will be number 12, that's David Hum, the left-hander, Tony Davis at fullback, 21 is Westbrook, the wing back and the eye back with a deep man off the eye formation, John O'Leary, he'll be alternating with Monty Anthony. So the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Backing up in the white shirts with Dave Gillespie, a sophomore out of Saratoga, California, and Don Westbrook, all the deep men. The Florida Gators will be kicking off and kicking for Florida. It'll be number three, David Posey. He's 5'6", 158 pounder, but he can really put the foot on the ball. There's the dangerous man right there, number 21, Don Westbrook. They're playing on artificial turf at 72 degrees in New Orleans, Louisiana. And the kick is high, and it goes to the goal line. Here comes Gillespie. Got a hole. Breaks it open to the 25-28 yard line. Fine return. Now let's have a look at the defense for the University of Florida Gators. Down in front, number 78 is Griffith, and number 67, Carpenter. Number 52 is Barber, defensive end, and Kendrick, number nine, of the other defensive end with Green, 99, the nose guard. We'll get the rest of them for you. As you can see, the linebackers, Ortega and Cameron, and here's the first offensive play of the ball game from the 28-yard line. First down, Nebraska Hum has him in the eye. Gives to the first man, Davis, the fullback, and he punches it out to about the 31-yard line. For a pickup of three is Glenn Cameron, number 43, makes the stop. Defensively for the University of Florida, Talbot on the left, number 28, as a cornerback. Number 21 is Tyson Seaver. 
Number 24 is Alvin Cowens, and number one is Wayne Field. Second down and seven yards to go for White Shirt in the rest of At their own 31-yard line, the second offensive play of the game, and Hum's going to put it up in a hurry. Looks for Westbrook, throws for him on the sidelines, and he caught it out of bounds. Incomplete pass. It'll bring it back. It'll be third down and seven. And let's have an early comment from Oklahoma Sooner coach Barry Switzer. Keith, uh, their basic formation, they came out in first and ten there. The eyes slide. They'll do a lot of things from that, Keith. Uh, second down there, they came out with two tight ends. They did that against us with the wing set. Of course, a play action pass. I tried to hit Westbrook in the deep out. All right, third down and seven for Nebraska as David Holmes sets. Alito is wide left. It is a oh, fumble. Oh, and fumble. Baker drops on it at the 29 yard line. A loss of two. Tony Davis drops on the ball. Tony Davis recovers the fumble as he ran right by the handoff. And Nebraska will have to punt on fourth down and nine. So the Cornhuskers are not able to move the football in their first offensive possession. And that is a very important thing, I think, for the University of Florida. The Gators are kind of chomping at the bit because. They have been kind of put down as the definite underdog. Alvin Cowens is the beat man. Randy Lessman doing the punting. And a fair catch is called right at the 35-yard line for the University of Florida. So here's your Florida offensive front now with Lee McGriff, a little guy, who will be the split in. On the left side of the center, it'll be Parker 76, Stanfield 77, Kynes in the middle at center, Lawless on the right, number 64, William 63, and Elvis Darby will be the tight end. In the backfield for the Florida Gators, it'll be Gaffney, Don Gaffney, number eight at quarterback. Number 31 is James Richards. Number 35 is Jimmy Dubose. And number 33 is Tony Green. They come off the wishbone. And oh, here players. is Gaffney turning in the middle. He moves the up to Richards. He goes from the 35 up to about the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. As he seemed to be struck with a moment of indecision as he came to the center of the line. Now let's set the Nebraska defense for you. Along the front, it is 72. Mike Fultz, he's the biggest horse up there, strongest man on the team. Number 69 up at the middle there is John Lee, the middle guard. Number 91 is Ron Pruitt, defensive tackle. Tom Pate is number 68, and Bob Martin is number 87. It is second down and seven for Florida from the 38. The ball goes to Richards. He's got a first down. He throws it big. He goes down to the Nebraska. 45-yard line. He picked up 18 yards on the play. Jimmy Burrow brought him down. Keith, that's not fair for wishbone teams to run those two plays. Throw the first play of the ball game, the second to break the wide, the wide slot run to draw the play, the play action pass. He really blew that open though and got good blocking on the left side as he was running behind Lawless and Williams and that's where they like to run him. Those two big guys in the trenches have done a fine job for Florida all year. First down, Gators. Gaffney hands it off in the middle. And the gain is down to about the 40 yard line. John Starkeybaum made the stop for Nebraska. The rest of the Cornhusker defense, Tom Rood is the strong linebacker, number 45. And Bob Nelson, number 57, the weak side linebacker. In the secondary, it is number 26, Wonderful Mons Jr. Jim Borough is number two, Ardell Johnson, 29, and George Kairos, the free safety, is number 18. Here goes Richards again, and he slashes down to the Nebraska 36-yard line. On second down and five, they're looking now at a third down and about one to go, and the Gators have come out breathing hard. I bet they're not going to throw this down, Keith. They're going to come right at you. It's a pretty impressive drive of Florida here. They, they haven't really run the triple option series yet, but they've pecked away at them, and they've got some things going right now, and they'll probably stay with what they're doing. I think they'll be... Gators in blue started on the 35-yard line. Ball goes to Tony Green, number 33. And Green, who had moved into the left halfback position for this game after having played right half, did not get a whole lot as John Lee, the middle guard, stepped across, filled the hole, and decked him. And let's have a look at the work of Lee. John Lee's the middle note of the nose guard here, 69. He's got great strength. He's 6'5", but 56, and he's uh, going to be a key for him. You know, here's a play. They run the inside belly to split in. That's an unusual play for a wishbone team right there. It's fourth down and a short yard, and the quarterback Gaffney dives for it, and I think he's got it. He poked his helmet down to about the 35-yard line. They didn't really have to go all the way to the 35, so it'll depend on where they put it. But I thought his penetration might have carried him far enough. 
Biggest play of the ball game so far, early in the game, Steve. Yep. We have many big plays during the ball game. Well, it's going to be ball. close here, too, Barry. I'll tell you. Barry Switzer of Oklahoma is our guest commentator tonight as ABC presents live and in color from New Orleans, a 44, 41st annual Sugar Bowl football classic. Oh, that's close. He didn't make it. They missed it by no more than two inches. Well, he stuck his head in there, but he wasn't able to move the football. And so, Nebraska uh, stops him and takes over. We have no score. 11 16 to go in the first quarter. I'm wearing the sign of cotton. Look for it when you want to feel comfortable. When you see it on towels, you can count on them to be really soft and thirsty. When you see it on sheets, they'll be fresh and comfortable. On shirts, jeans, jackets too. Natural cotton makes you comfortable. So when you're looking for comfort, look for the sign of cotton. The more cotton, the better you feel. I'm old Garrison. And you know there's times when a guy just can't smoke. And that's when I'm glad I've got scope. It's smokeless tobacco. Gives you real tobacco pleasure, but you don't light up. You just take a pinch and put it between your cheek and gum, and it sure feels relaxing in there. And man, I need something to help me relax. For tobacco pleasure without smoking, millions of guys use Skoll, Copenhagen, and Happy Days. We look down on the Sugar Bowl here in New Orleans from the airship Mayflower, the Goodyear blimp. Don Pasconak and cameraman Bill Sullivan up there providing that spectacular picture. That's one of four of the airships floating around over the world. And the Nebraska Cornhuskers just outside their 35-yard line have the football first down. Spread formation. Florida with six men up front. And a handoff goes to Tony Davis, the fullback. Penalty flag is on the field as Davis works his way to about the 33-yard line. Sammy Green, the nose guard for the blue-shirted Florida Gators, jumped in there to make the stop number 99. See him clapping his hands, and the call is going to go against the Huskers for holding. Cal, 15 big ones. Take this moment to introduce the rest of our cast, and they, too, are splendidly attired on this festive evening in New Orleans. Mr. Don Carlson and Mr. James Lampley, you'll be hearing from them as the evening wears along. Terry O'Neill is with us, our statistician, and Jerry Klein is our spotter. We have two tight ends in there right now for Nebraska, Mushinsky and Brad Jenkins. And the Huskers are sitting back at their own 22-yard line. We're first down and about 23. And Hit hard as he comes up across the 20 to the line of scrimmage. Ball came loose for a moment, but he recovered. Preston Kendrick, number 90, really laid some leather on him, and some of the numbers on these two teams for the season gives you an idea that certainly both of them are capable of moving the football, but particularly Florida on the ground. Gators have not gone to the pass with the frequency of Nebraska. Chief Evan Preston. Florida's defensive pursuit so far against the rushing game of Nebraska. Very strong. They're in that 52 now uh -oh, as the ball is popped off West to Westbrook. Westbrook. Westbrook, the wing back getting inside, getting three good blocks as he works his way to the sidelines and goes out of bounds at about the 38-39 yard line, picks up 15 yards on the play. That is short, however, of the first down because the Cornhuskers have to go to their 46 for the first down. Oh, they're going to be looking at a third down. And about seven yards to go. Call it eight yards to go. Third and eight. So on third and long, Rich Ball comes wide to the right side for white-shirted Nebraska. O'Leary's up in the slot. Tom looks at him, goes instead. The ball is picked off. Pass is intercepted by Randy Talbot. And Talbot comes back to the Nebraska 20 yard line. First down Gators, 31 yard return. Well, that's a big play right there. Tom had his, his eye back, O'Leary, or in that particular alignment, his slot back, O'Leary loose right. on the short pattern, but instead tried to go deep 
He sprinted into the boundary of the weak side in the spread formation, tried to throw back in the deep curl all the way across the field to Baugh, and of course the corner squatted, didn't go to cover deep third. They were playing five short in and had two people covering deep Keith, and the corner just squatted on him, made a great play, stepped inside of him. And I felt all along, and particularly, and I think probably being a wishbone technician as you are, Coach, the most important thing for a wishbone team is to get out in front. And a handoff yes. goes to Green. Up the middle. Oh, He's going for the corner. That guy's got some speed. Hey, hey, Keith, these guys aren't wishbone. They haven't run a wishbone play yet. Oh, they give the ball to the fullback once. Wide slot and run the tailback draw to Green. Great running back. Freshman, got this to come for freshman of the year. Twenty-one yard gallop by Tony Green, and watch the blocking. Blow Wide ball. slot right, right here. They just the draw play drops back, ends the ball with a fullback lead draw play. And Green is a great runner. He's a four-five speed. Uh, Doug Dickey thinks he's a tremendous football player. He's going to have a great future. Florida. David Posey knocks the extra point through. We'll have another look at that touchdown play in a moment. Right now, with nine minutes and 49 seconds to play, the Florida Gators lead seven to nothing. This Sunday, ABC's Wide World of Sports, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central and Pacific Times, will be bringing you the heavyweight championship fight, Muhammad Ali's eighth round knockout victory over George Foreman. Champion will be with me in the studio analyzing the fight as it took place, giving his inner feelings during the course of the bout. Also, on the same show, the second annual World Series of Auto Racing. This Sunday, Wide World of Sports, 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central and Pacific Times. <laughs> All right, Florida will kick it off. Posey will kick to Gillespie and Westbrook. The kick is short, bouncing over the head of Gillespie, wiggles into the end zone, and Nebraska will have it first down at their own 20-yard line, and now let's have a look at that touchdown run by Green. Here's a fine run here, Keith. You know, here's the fullback lead draw. He blocks the defensive tackle, the fullback. Green makes a cut to the outside here. He's got the 4-5 speed. He shows some running ability here. He bounces outside here at the perimeter of the Nebraska defense and uses his speed right here. You think that guy's got an angle on him, but he didn't, did he? He's only a freshman. All right, Nebraska. Let's see what they can do behind him. Give the ball off to Monty Anthony, who is another brilliant freshman running back. Hit at the line of scrimmage, spun off the stack, worked his way to the 24. Anthony was the Big 8 newcomer of the year in the Big 8 conference, Keith. He rushed for about 600 yards freshman uh, year at Nebraska. He was a newcomer in our league, fine football player. Darrell Carpenter, 6-7. Vernon Barber, 52, pinched on the tackle. Tom Osborne, the Nebraska coach on the sidelines. A very warm, balmy evening in New Orleans. Unbalanced. Unbalanced. It's far wide to the left side. Pitch goes to Anthony. Cuts back to the 25, and good defensive flow by Florida. Kendrick, the man that knocked him down. 245-pound defensive end, number 90. Nebraska, third possession, no first down. They've been impressive both ways. Offensively, they moved it two possessions. They scored on the second one with an interception. Now their, their defense has played uh, probably more consistent than their offense has, Keith. They look fine. Both teams play the basic 5-2 Oklahoma front defense for deep. Eight minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. Florida leading 7-0. Third down and five yards to go for Nebraska. And off to the fullback, Davis. He might and have it. Tony's close. He's a tough little guy. You walk up to him, he looks like a little baby face, sort of a guy that'd be sitting up in a tree trunk looking over the fence at a ball game as he picked up the first down, but I'll tell you, he'll stick his head in there against anybody. You know, he was a tailback last year, Keith. He rushed for over 1,000 yards and moved him to fullback this year. And to give an added dimension, they didn't have a runner at fullback uh, last year, and they felt like this certainly would help them having the two eye-backs, O'Leary and Anthony, with the Davis at fullback, would add another dimension they haven't had. First points have been put on the board by Florida. First points scored against Nebraska in the first quarter all season. So the Gators indeed surprised uh -oh. them. Here's Hom in trouble. Shakes off a tackle. Throws it deep. Melito is back there. Passes. Deflected it incomplete. And I'll tell you, Randy Talbot, if he'd been able to look up in the lights and find the football, would have had his second interception. Now let's join Jim Lampley. Tony Green may have been one of the best freshman running backs in the country this year. But a year ago when Florida coaches recruited him, they had no idea they were getting a great running back. 
He played high school ball at Sarasota, Florida, in an offense that was all passing. And he only carried the ball about four or five times a game. First game this year, over 150 yards. Keith? That's laryngitis Jim there. <laughs> He's really struggling with it. Second down and 10. Tom threw that ball 61 yards in the air. He's going to put it up again. Has a man on the sideline. Russian route. And he goes to Westbrook. He had Moshinsky on the sidelines. The tight end open, and he went for Westbrook and missed it. Hit him right in the hands. He dropped that one, Keith. Tom threw that one in there. Alvin Butler, 38, defending for Florida. The Gators are in the blue shirts, and the Cornhuskers wearing the white, and Florida leads with 7.59 to go in the first quarter, 7 to nothing, on a 21-yard sprint by freshman halfback Tony Green. The play was set up by an interception by Randy Talbot, who just a moment ago had a very good chance at his second intercept of the game and couldn't find the ball until the last second. All right, it's third down and 10 for Nebraska. Ball comes wide to the right. And the pass to the sideline. Did he drop that one? Couldn't tell. No. Incomplete pass. So apparently it didn't hold it or else caught it out of bounds. So Nebraska will have to punt it. Tom is one for six for 16 yards in the ball game so far. And the folks from Florida have made the trip to New Orleans love it. And I imagine several hundred thousand or a million Florida fans over this country like it as well. All right. Dropping back is Alvin Cowens, number 24. Randy Lessman, number 39. A sophomore out of Sioux City, Iowa. Do the punting for Nebraska. Got a lot of heat. Gets his kick away. Cowens going to bring it up. Call fair catch. 34-yard punt. That's below his average of 39 plus. 36-yard line. Florida has it. First down. Gators lead Nebraska 7 to nothing. It'll be interesting now to see what defensive changes Nebraska might make against Florida since the Gators have come out with some surprising moves out of the wishbone formation. Gaffney is the quarterback. Dubose, number 35, is in there. So is Richards. Richards, big boy. He's stronger and bigger than he really would appear. And, of course, Green out of the wishbone with McGriff split wide to the left side. Gaffney keeps the ball coming around on the option. Going to turn it in and pick a wallop, didn't he? Oh, he took a hit from George Kairos, the free safety for the Cornhuskers. I tell you what they're going to do, Keith. They're going to go to McGriff in a hurry with that safety supporting like that. I talked to him earlier today, and they said that they'll be quick to go to the pass, and I'm sure that uh, they're going to come back a few minutes with the poster out trying to beat that safety supporting inside out. Well, in the first place, Kairos is not that tall. He's only 5'9", and if he is coming up, he's leaving a hole back there somewhere, isn't he? That's right. They got double the play to the right side. Give it inside to Tony Green. And Green going from the 36 out to the 39 for about three yards before Tom Fate 68 and Ron Pruitt 91 make the stop for Nebraska. Right. Now about the Nebraska defense sitting in the same formation right. as we take a look at Rude. Here's the basic play of the wishbone offense here, Keith. The linebacker going to the outside is trying to take the quarterback in this case. And we have a fine block for the freshman halfback green right there. Fine block. The quarterback then turns up outside that block. Got this going up. He's going deep down the middle. The pass is complete to the tight end. Derby. He caught it right in between two corn huskers. And it's a first down for Florida at the Nebraska 29-yard line. A gain of 32 yards on the play. So Derby, the tight end, makes a great grab and Gaffney put it on the money. I thought Gaffney couldn't throw, Keith. <laughs> He's looking he pretty good so much so better than that, Willie. He was right in between Burrow and Kairos. Derby is 6'6", 219. Burrow is 6 footer and Kairos 5'9". They try the middle with Dubos, number 35, the fullback carrying it. Didn't get a whole lot, two yards out of the play. And so Florida continues to move the football. You're talking about Kairos not being a very large player. You know, uh, Lee McGriff, the split receiver. Practicing on the sidelines. That's the first time I've seen that, where they've got a little screen down. Yeah, yeah. Just hammering the ball into the screen. Soccer style. He'll wear that out for the gaze over here. <laughs> with a whole link. <laughs> All right, it's second down. Eight yards to go. The pitch to Richards on a sweep. Good defensive flow this time as uh, Pruitt and Pate went for the play. And they got Richards after a yard. They're, they're running plays. I've never seen the wishbone. They run a quick pitch to the split end and pull the tackle in, Keith. Yeah, Obviously got Tom Osborne and his folks stirring around on the sidelines, too. They run a kind of wide-open wishbone here. We've got five minutes and 25 seconds to play in the first quarter. The football is sitting at the 27-yard line. I'm going to call it third down and a short eight. As number eight, Don Gaffner, the Florida quarterback, sets him. He's 
back to throw as all day. Oh, he gets in trouble now and down he goes. John Lee, number 61, walked through and got his man with help from Tate, number 68. Tate pitched in and Lee came from the other side. He lost four yards. It'll be fourth down. Get to see the gab kick at something else besides the net here. Well, it'll be a pretty good wallop because it's going to be a 48-yard field goal try. Buster Morrison will hold it, and David Posey, a sophomore out of Boca Raton, will go for the field goal, 12 out of 24. It's a low line drive, and it's too low. He missed it. That wasn't partially blocked, was it? No. Uh, I think he just hit it high, hit it, but sailed it through the hole, and that didn't get enough under right. So with four minutes and 33 seconds to play in the first quarter, the referee Earl Shostrom out of the Big 8 Conference waves it off as no good, and the Florida Gators lead in the football game by a score of seven to nothing. Look here now, the work of Lee, number 69, coming out of that middle guard position for Nebraska. Getting a good pass rush. Fultz, Lee, fine play right here, I believe. 69. And here comes John O'Leary at first and 10 at the 20 yard line on the I back. Gets no more than a yard as he runs into Green, Sammy Green 99, Clint Griffith 78, and Daryl Carpenter 6 to 7. The middle four for the Florida defense. The Hula Bowl comes up at 4 Eastern time this Saturday on ABC. And boy, have we got a roster for you in that one. For example, the East quarterbacks will be Condridge Holloway of Tennessee and Dennis Franklin of Michigan. The West, Pat Hayden of USC and Steve Barkowski of California. I'll tell you more later. Second down and nine yards to go. Nebraska, 21-yard line. Hustle's play on seven to nothing. Here goes O'Leary, busting it up the middle. He's at the 30, 31-yard line. First down, Cornhuskers. Wayne Fields brings him down, a junior out of Gainesville. And the guards, Allward, Hegner, and the middleman, Bonas, the center, helped him get loose for the 10-yard pickup. They're going to have to have some success in the running game, Keith, here to help their passing game complement it. That's the best run they've had on offense. The Larry's in the ball game, Anthony out now. Florida 84 yards, Nebraska 37 total yard in so far in the ball game with 335 to go. Pitch goes to O'Leary and O'Leary gets a yard as he tries to slant the left side. Florida getting very good defensive flow from the front men. Vernon Barber 52 made that stop. Here's Don Tollison. With me is Vince Ferragamo. Next year may very well be the starting quarterback for Nebraska. He transferred from Cal and has to sit out this entire year. Vince, what should we look for from your offense here in the first quarter now? Well, they've been working on about 50-50 run pass, so I don't know. It's probably isolation is probably the best running play. In practice, you duplicated the Florida offense, playing the role of the Florida quarterback. Why do you think they were able to move the ball so well on your defense? Well, I, I guess they have to, you know, have a little chance to loosen up a little bit. You know, they're a little bit tight right now, and they just got lucky on a couple plays, that's all. Best luck to you next year, Vince. Thank you. Keith? Thank you, Don. Vince Ferragamo transferred to Nebraska from California. He is not eligible to play. We're not talking with a man who's involved in the game tonight, except from the standpoint of interest. He will, however, be eligible and go into spring practice and very likely could be the starting quarterback for Nebraska next year. He's a good one. Third down and eight yards to go for the Cornhuskers. The ball is at just outside the 31. Hum has missed five straight passes now. David's got it in the air again, throws, and the pass is incomplete. As intended for Chuck Melito, number 89. He had to come back for it, and it was too low. So now David Hum is one for eight, 16 yards so far in the first quarter, 254 to play. I think that was an automatic then, Keith. You might have noticed that Hum took a little longer at the line of scrimmage then. I think he audible, and I think even if he had caught the bod, caught the pass, it would not have been enough for a first down. It came up a little short. Alvin Cowens, 24, 180-pound sophomore out of Alexandria, Virginia. Deep wearing the blue shirt for the Florida Gators. The man to do the punting is Randy Lessman for Nebraska. Gets it all. Oh, that's a good one. Going to hang it up there and float it a little bit. Here comes Cowens up on one knee at the 30-yard line. That's a 37-yard punt, a little closer to his average. And back downfield, we have a penalty flag. Flag thrown back around the 35-yard line. And they're coming back. He's talking to the Florida defensive captain. Number 55 is Ortega. They can punt it again. The referee is Earl Shostrom. 
The umpires, Harvey Hardy, the headlinesman, Wendell Winkler, the field judge, Joe Delaney, the line judge, Doug Mosley, the back judge is Artie Falk, and the clock operator is D.L. Claiborne. And they want another shot at it, thinking perhaps they might get a run back as, as Nebraska draws a five-yard procedure call. Snap is on the money. Lessman's kick is not too long. Cowan's nailed at the 34. Goodness sakes alive, did he take a walk? They had to return on then, Keith. The last three punts, there's been a pressure situation. They tried to block him, and they had to return on that time. They were only rushed five people, made him punt on the rhythm, and tried to set the wall up in front of the Nebraska bench, but he kicked the ball this side of the field. Fine tackle. Rich Duda, the man who hit him. 37 yards on the punt. Watch Duda, number 50, come in here. Well, that's some stick right here. Did a good job of just holding on the ball. That's right. All right, it's at the 34-yard line for Florida. First down. Gaffney is your quarterback. On the option down the line, delivers it outside. And it is Larry Brinson, number 39, a 206-pound sophomore out of, Brent, out of uh, Miami, carrying the ball. Brinson has started some of the games this season, in fact, most of the games, but has had a leg injury. And it looks like Green, number 33, is down and shaken up on the play. It's not a leg. Somebody might have... Uh, Knocked some of the wind out of him. He so. was the lead blocker on that play, Keith. I watched him make the block on the corner. They made a fine run there, picked up eight yards. They've uh, been able to move the ball with some consistency in the rushing game, certainly here. So Tony Green will come out and get pumped up. It'll be second down and a long two for Florida with the football sitting out just short All right. of the 42 yard line. Two minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first quarter in Florida, leading by a score of seven to nothing. Tom Osborne on the right. Wearing the headset, head coach of Nebraska. Nebraska figured to be about a two touchdown favorite coming into the ball game. So far, Florida has pretty well dominated the first period of play. Ball is handed off to the first man out of the wishbone formation, the fullback, and he carries it for the first down as he reaches the 46 yard line. Dubos behind Stanfield, Lawless, and Pines. Been all Florida so far, Keith. Very impressive. That's a pretty decent average for those backs, the starting backfield. That'll make a bunch of first downs right there. Yes, sir. First down, Florida Gators at their own 46-yard line, and we have a minute quarter to play in the first quarter as Gaffney gives the ball inside again. I thought that ball might have been almost loose as the play went into the line, but Bob Martin and Mike Foltz were right there to jump on the ball carrier, and Dubos apparently had a pretty good grip on it. Florida's had their problems with fumbles uh, over the year, covering about half of them. But when you're running out of the wishbone and out of the veer and some of these formations where the ball is moved at the last second, fumbles are not terribly unusual like that, for example, as uh, the quarterback Gaffney held on until the very last second and then delivered the ball outside to Brinson, and Brinson is down to the Nebraska. He may be inside the 45. Gain of about eight yards on the play. It'll be close to a first down. Let's have a look at Tom Rude, 45. Right here, Rude makes a fine play on the boundary here. Kairos, 18, supported inside out and hit the quarterback. He made a fine pitch. The halfback made a good run up the boundary, but Rude had to stop him here. Makes a fine tackle. Pursues all the way to the boundary. They're giving too much yardage, though. When Rude's got to come across the field and make a play that deep down the boundary, they're getting too much. They've got to stop that. And they did get a first down out of it. The ball is at the Nebraska 44-yard line as David Hum spreads on the sideline. Here's Gaffney. In trouble. Oh, steps out of it. Now he goes down. Pruitt, 91. Got it. And uh, say if uh, you take away Pruitt and Gaffney might have run for most of the night. Pruitt got him by the leg. Back at the 48-yard line. That's a loss. Of four, maybe five, closer to five. Let's call it second down, 15. Well, they still haven't gone to that wide receiver, McGriff, yet. They went to the tight end. <laughs> this time, they keep it on the ground. Green back in the lineup. He advances the ball down to the 46-yard line. If they keep averaging five yards of that play, Keith, we're going back and put that one in, too. 
<laughs> I think it'll fit their wishbone. Morgan, Bob Morgan, number 20, coming into the fullback. And the quarter is over. Four after one, Florida seven, Nebraska nothing. The lights are shining over the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana, and the Florida Gators. Third down, and about 12 yards to go at the Nebraska 46-yard line, and Gaffney whips it short. Ball is dropped. Forward pass, it is incomplete, intended for Brinson. And Brinson trying to run before he got a hold of the handle. He had some room, too. He might have got this first down. He probably got enough that had gone on fourth down right there, Keith. They've been in four-down zone. I think they've probably been inside the 30, 35-yard line, and it might have gone for it. All right, Burrow, number two, drops back. Jimmy Burrow, Jr., out of Amory, Mississippi. And to do the punting, it's Buster Morrison, number nine, for the Florida Gators. He hits the ball from his 48-yard line, and it is fielded short by Nebraska's Gwynn. Pick his number up in a minute. 30-yard punt, 7-yard return. The first quarter statistics. Heidorf, Mark Heidorf, the number 22 that brought 39 the ball 39 yards. Nebraska. they got to do more than that. Let's see what they can do in this quarter here, Keith. That was all Florida the first quarter, start of the second. Let's see what Nebraska can turn around here. They're going to have to. Well, David Hum, it just, uh, they've just handled him so far. He hasn't been able to find uh, one man open all night. Actually, he did. he's hit two. He had the ball dropped on one occasion. From the 22-yard line, they take it up the middle, running right in behind Bonus, Hegner, Allward, and Crenshaw, and it's Westbrook, number 21. Westbrook is a tough guy coming back on that little counter inside. Very tough. We'll probably see him later on, Keith, run the reverse. He ran a reverse 40 yards on a touchdown drive against us, and uh, we'll see that, I'm sure, before the half, probably. Ball is at the 27-yard line. It's second down and five for Nebraska. That's Anthony, the tailback to the 30, outside to the 31. He's going to be a yard shy of his first down. Here's Don. Many college football players are fine students, but few, if any, can equal the dual performance of Nebraska's Monty Anthony's on the field and in the classroom. Monty Anthony is the first freshman in modern history to start for Nebraska, and he was the leading ground gainer for him this year. Meanwhile, in the classroom, he was piling up 27 semester credits while excelling in difficult courses like calculus, chemical engineering, and computer science. Keith? Thank you, Don. Third down, a short yard for the Cornhuskers at the 31-yard line. Here's Anthony, wide right, first down, cuts it back, breaks it big, goes to midfield, goes to the Florida. 48-yard line, first down, 22 yards. That was the most explosive move by Nebraska so far. Keith, I think that was the first time that Nebraska has run three consecutive downs in the ball game. It's the first three rushes they've had in a row, and uh, they got some results out of it. Rick Monis threw a big block in the middle on Green here. Just sealed him off. Fine block. Pitch sweep, and they walled everything off the outside. First down, Cornhuskers. Florida 48-yard line. Florida leading 7-0. Just starting the second quarter of play. Huh, back to throw. Looks for Westbrook. Oh, throw wow. short. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Kendrick, the defensive end. So a wide awake defensive end was in the right place at the right time. Brought it back 17 yards, and Florida's back in business. Boy, I tell you what, that takes something out of you right there. Here they move the football for about 30 yards and they come up on first and 10, throw the interception there. Oh. Tell you what, Florida is playing lights out right now. Great job on defense. Um, one for nine, 16 yards, two interceptions. Great field position. They'll take this got a chance four down zone here. Come at them four times. Just don't throw. First down, Florida, Nebraska, 33-yard line. Gaffney gives the ball to Green. Skips into the middle of the 30-yard line. Three-yard pickup. John Lee, 6-9, principal tackler for Nebraska. 12.47 to go at the first half, and Florida leading 7 to nothing. Doug Dickey moves back to his alma mater on a very successful tenure at the University of Tennessee. Second down and 7 for the Gators. It's Tony Green, fumbles the football, Nebraska's got it. 
Oh. They say they even out, Chris. Ardell Johnson covers it. Senior out of Chillicothe, Missouri. 27 yard line. Nebraska first down. Florida leads it 7 to nothing. When you say five, why should you? There are maybe six million skiers in America, but only a handful who can do it like this. Being really good at anything has never been easy. The Budweiser people understand that, too. They're making sure that caring isn't just a memory. When you say Budweiser, you said it all. 100% cotton shirts and jeans are Saturday morning, comfortable and cool. A cotton shirt is Saturday night, comfortable and elegant. Cotton is a quiet weekend, warm and cozy. Cotton is a business meeting when you could be hot under the collar, but you're not, because cotton breathes. 100% cotton, the shirt and jeans fiber. When you're looking for comfort, look for the sign of cotton. The more cotton, the better you feel. Sugar Bowl in New Orleans with 12 minutes and 26 seconds to play in the first half. And David Hunt sends white shirted Nebraska to the attack again. As Ardell Johnson recovered Tony Green's fumble, John O'Leary is the deep man, Tony Davis is the short man. Ba is wide to the right side, and Hunt gives the ball to O'Leary. And O'Leary, patient, waited for a moment and turned into the middle of the line and wiggled for the better part of three yards. Sammy Green made the stop, 99. Here's a look at his work. Isolate on the nose guard here. Both are playing well in the ball game. Lee and Green, here's a fine play on the sprint draw to O'Leary. He makes the cut back, and the center over plays in the outside, and Green controls the block, makes the play. Second down, seven yards to go for the Cornhuskers. Tom Long count may have checked off pitches to O'Leary. The New Yorker takes it. Past the 30 to the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. He'll be about a yard short of his first down as Ralph Ortega, number 55, brought him down. Third and one. I bet they don't throw here, Keith. Well, based on the stats in the game so far, it would seem an unlikely thing considering the fact David Holmes missed the last seven passes. He, he had one Florida player, though. Yes, he sure did. All right, Westbrook coming into the slot on the left side. They're tight on the right. Florida moves six men up. Now seven. Pitch it out to O'Leary. Turns it back in. Gets his first down. Penalty flag at the 40-yard line. Penalty flag is thrown out of the defensive secondary by the official. The gain was enough for the first down as Clint Griffith, a senior out of Baker, Florida, number 78, made the stop for the Gators. It looks to me like we might have a face mask call here. You know, Barry, I sort of like the rule the pros have in this. If it's an unintentional, it's uh, less painful. Right, uh, that's of course a discretion call. The officials, you know, that can uh, depends on who they call it on us or their opponent. <laughs> well, it's it's a it's the thing that sticks out there. It's very easily if you're grabbing for somebody to get a finger or a hand hooked in it. That's right, but it's automatic in college football. And of course, the great worry is injury. Nobody wants to see a young man get hurt about that neck or head. It's first down. Nebraska at the 45-yard line of Florida. And the Huskers trying to get something going. Count it inside to Westbrook. Oh, he fumbles the football, and Florida recovers it. Just when it looked like Nebraska was going to blow it down the field, Westbrook hit hard, coughed it up, and Wayne Fields recovers for Florida. There he is, number one. Here's a look at the linebacker, 43, Cameron, who knocks the ball loose. He makes a fine play. They run the reverse. He starts one way with the flow and has to go back, comes off that block and makes the tackle, and there goes the ball. It was a fumble, and, of course, has a big play for Florida. Looks like Nebraska uh, might be moving to take that one in, Keith. Just when the Cornhuskers uh, were getting it together, they cough it up. Florida has it. First down at their own 28-yard line. Gators leading 7-0. And Gaffney 
Gives the ball to Dubos, the fullback out of the wish bone, slants it up to the 34 yard line for close to six yards on the play. 11 09 to go in the first half. Starkybaum and Pate make the stop. Nebraska's turned it over three times now. They're making too much on first and ten. Second down, long four. Here's a sweep with Tony Green, number 33. Runs out of the grasp of Starkebaum. Pate put him away. Out near the 38-yard line. Going to be a little bit short of his first down. Ball's right in between the hash marks of the 37-38. And let's call it third down and a yard. Southeastern, Southeastern Conference in the Rose Bowl, in the, uh, the bowl games on the road have done very well as Gaffney, the quarterback, turns it inside and gets his first down as he reaches the 42 before Tom Pate makes another tackle for the Cornhuskers. Gaffney, when he does get outside and is able to make his cut and get in, get in there and make the turn, he is uh, he's a pretty tough runner. Keith, he's got pretty good quickness. He's only rushed for 188 yards this year after losses uh, in a wishbone. That's not much yards for a wishbone quarterback, but uh, he's got the quickness and speed that you want to look for in that position, this offense. Ball is at the 42-yard line, first down to Florida. And it's Richards, number 31. James Richards, a 214-pound junior out of Marietta, Georgia, punching for two. Tom Pate again makes the stop for Nebraska. They've probably run that play more than any play this evening, Keith. That's a lead draw play. Fullback leading the halfback on the draw of the broken formation. Come Nine on. and a half minutes to go in the first half now. That big gives to Green, and Green is hit by Starkey Bomb and Pate. So 48 and 68 are making the bulk of the tackles right now for Nebraska, and Florida is going to be looking at third down and long. The ball is at the 48-yard line near the 48 of Florida, and it'll be third down and, a, and five yards to go. Big down for Nebraska. They've got to stop them here and not allow them to get any more field position because they'll have a long way to go when they get the ball to make another first down. The drift is wide left. Gaffney puts it in the air. The ball is slapped backwards and it's an incomplete forward pass and he was going from a drift that time. That was high enough in the air. Pruitt had a time to think about dropping that one, Keith. <laughs> it had been something if he had asked you that. You think he made it to the goal? <laughs> no. <laughs> he had a foot race for that quarterback. I think Gaffney would have won. So the incomplete pass brings up fourth down and they'll put it away with Buster Morrison number nine to do the kicking. And it'll be Jim Burrow number two deep to return it for Nebraska. Low snap, high kick, pretty good kick, hangs it well. Burrow, fair catch. And Nebraska has the ball, first down. 10 yards to go at about the 18-yard line. 35 yards on the kick, but very good hang time. Eight minutes and 43 seconds to go in the first half, and the Florida Gators still lead it, seven to nothing. yard line. A little bit closer to the 18 than the 17. They trail 7 to nothing with 8.43 to go in the first half and Hum pitches to Anthony on a sweep. Gets it inside. He's out to close to the 25 yard line. Glenn Cameron 43 on the stop for Florida. The two guys that made that play work were Crenshaw 73 and Hegner 64 on the right side of the offensive line. The sweep's been the best play for Nebraska so far, Keith. They've run it to the tight end and to the slot. It was the slot side that time. And Westbrook went the wrong way. Hum had to call him over the other side, or they would have been in trouble because he's the key blocker on the sweep. <laughs> Second down and two. Huskins trailing, trying to get it going. Hum gives to Davis. Davis in the middle. Goes out to about the 28. Should have a first down. Here's Don Tullison. It looks as though Catfish Hunter may have finally decided which team he wants to play for next year. A press conference is going on right now, and at that press conference, Hunter is expected to announce his decision. We'll have details for you later on during the telecast of tonight's Sugar Bowl. Keith? Thank you, Don. That means old Catfish will get on back to his hunting come tomorrow. Drop all this talking. First down for Nebraska at the 28-yard line. This time Davis is hit at the line of scrimmage, but tough Tony bowls his way over the right side for three, maybe four yards before they can get him. 
But Keith, uh, Nebraska's had three turnovers, haven't they? Yep. Three turnovers. they got to stop helping Florida. Florida doesn't need any help the way they're playing. They've got to start helping themselves. Ball comes in, number 24, at a wide receiver position now. Ball advanced from the 28 to the 32. It'll be second down and six for Nebraska. And Rich Bach comes wide to the left. Westbrook is up in the wingback position to the left side. Oh, Westbrook got it. But Florida smelled it coming and peeled off and played it very well as Preston Kendrick, 90, refused to give on it, chased the play to the sideline. They played that play the way we did uh, against Nebraska, Keith. Uh, Kendrick goes to the strong side. He was lined up on the slot side, and he keyed the wing back. The wing back delayed and started to reverse to the weak side, and he chased him, ran with him down the line of scrimmage, and made the play from behind him. you got enough speed in your defensive ends, that's a great way to play the reverse. We, in this case, being the Oklahoma Sooners, because you're listening to the comments of our guest commentator, Barry Switzer, the head football coach at Oklahoma. Third down, three yards to go. Hum puts it up. Oh. Intercepted! Kendrick's got it again. The ball was batted in the air by one of the defensive linemen, and then Kendrick snatched it up, and that's the third interception of the night. And Kendrick's second. You know, I, I talked to Kenny Hatfield, their defensive uh, secondary coach, before the game today, Keith, and he told me this guy right here is a fine, fine football player, and he's proved it tonight. He's made two big plays. He's a, they say he runs a 40 and about 4.7. He weighs about, what, 2.30, something like that? Yep. Fine-looking athlete. Jimmy Fisher, number 10, comes on the field at quarterback now for the Florida Gators. First time we've seen Fisher. He is the better passer of the two Florida quarterbacks. 6.28 to go in the first half. The Gators leading 7-0, have the ball at the Nebraska 37. It's Tony Green to the 35. So Fisher, number 10, is in there for the first time. He is a sophomore out of Tampa. David Hum on the sidelines. You know, he, he must be ready to start mumbling to himself where things are going. It hadn't been his night so far, Keith. They've had four, they went in the battle of the turnovers. They've had four to Florida's one. Florida's had great field position. Second down, seven yards to go for the Gators. Fumble. Fisher, fresh quarterback, comes in, fumbles the ball, and covers it. There's Kendrick. Well, you know, Hum is. Uh, Hasn't had any success throwing the ball tonight, but he's had some bad things happen to him. They've pressured him pretty good, and they've had two balls deflected, batted up in the air to cause two interceptions here. And uh, I know uh, he's set close to the line of scrimmage, and they're just getting too many people close to him to make him throw poorly right now. Got to get deeper or protect better. A fumble by Fisher makes it third down and ten. Fisher in trouble. Down he goes. It was a great pass rush by Tom Pate, number 68. And number 72, Mike Fultz. You know, Nebraska is playing good defense, Keith. They've had the great pressure put on them. They've had bad field position, and they've played extremely well and forced them to punt into, uh, into this field position. And, but their offense has been so inconsistent with the turnovers that uh, just haven't given themselves a chance. They've got to quit that or they can't make it. Burrow, number two, is deep now for Nebraska. And Buster Morrison, number nine, will do the punting. Snap is on the money, and no rush at all. He kicks it high in the air, angles it for the corner. If he gets the right kind of a bounce, it bounces back into the field of play and bounces dead, and he's put down at the Nebraska nine-yard line, 34-yard punt. We have 4.41 to go in the first half, and Florida still leads Nebraska 7 to nothing. The football has been placed right on the 10-yard line, where Nebraska, again, with very poor field position, will try to get something going. 4.41 to go in the first half, and Florida leading 7 to nothing. Tom pitches the ball to O'Leary. Cameron, 43, right on the old breastbone. Nails him with a solid tackle as he gets it out to the 15-yard line. He's done. The speculation has finally come to an end. This spring, Catfish Hunter will be wearing the pinstripes of the New York Yankees. Hunter, who played such a key role in those Oakland World Championships, Signed a five-year contract with the Yankees. He'll earn a reported $3.7 million. Keith? Oh, holy cow. Yeah, that's, that's better than coaching. $3.7 million for five years. That is absolutely mind-boggling. Good grief. Well, more power to it. The football now in the possession of Nebraska is at the 18-yard line, and it's third down and two right here. 
I can't either. I just can't <laughs> believe it. But I guess if anybody around the game of baseball ought to have it, Catfish would be the man because he probably means instant success for the Yankees. We'll see. Third down, two. It's O'Leary. Got the first down to the 23 yard line. Collins, 24, grabbed him by the feet. Gary Higgs, the fullback, came into that hole first, knocked it open for O'Leary to get through. That's been their best play to pitch sweep to the slot of the tight end. I believe they're automatic in quite a bit to that play, Keith. They did in our ball game, too. And Tom does a lot at the line of scrimmage. You know, Florida's field position has been great this half. They've had the ball at the 33 and the 37 in this quarter, but they didn't score. They come back to Hornham, too, before the game's over. First down, Nebraska. At the 23-yard line, it's O'Leary cutting outside. Runs over one man, and finally he is tracked down by Alvin Butler. And he's all the way out to the 33-yard line, close to a first down. Crenshaw, name Marvin. Penalty flag on the field. Watch him, 73. 73. Base block, he goes low to scramble him here, and O'Leary does a fine job of bouncing outside. He was going to run the isolation off a counter play, off tackle, but he bounced outside the containment and made a fine run. Got a penalty. In the meantime, that penalty flag thrown back there at the... He indicated holding, didn't he? I missed it, Keith. Must be. Offsetting penalties. First and ten. So well, come back for a second. It nullifies a fine ten-yard effort by O'Leary. So it's offsetting penalties. The ball is still at the 23. First down and ten. With three minutes and 28 seconds to play in the first half, Tom flips it inside to Westbrook. Westbrook struggles and gets. To, I tell you, that play would just scare me to death. <laughs> right. They've already threw two interceptions, five yards of line of scrimmage, and they want to run the Utah pass. Oh, does that make you nervous? He throws it right into a crowd. Of when it works, it works. But there's a lot of folks in there reaching and grabbing for that ball, aren't there? Of course, he could have gone 80 yards for a touchdown, too. Been a great play and great call. i tell you what, we better not call that one. Whew. That goes back to Jack Curtis, doesn't it? Jack was Jack, wasn't he the guy that came hey, up with that? Uh, a bunch of guys a long time ago had that one. <laughs> <laughs> 252 to go. It's second down and 10. No gain on that. As Higgs, the fullback, tries to cut it back over the left guard and gets to the 25, maybe the 26. You think Davis is hurt the reason he's not playing fullback, Tony Davis? I'll tell you, I saw this. Uh, I've seen Nebraska twice during the regular season, and, and uh, this big fella Higgs, 206-pound sophomore out of Toledo, the times I've seen him, uh, he's been a rather impressive athlete. I don't believe he played in that ball game. We had got Davis all day. Call at the 25-yard line, make it third down and eight yards to go for Nebraska as Hump takes it. He delivers it to Bob. Bob on a sweep coming around from the other side of the field. It's Delton at the 33-yard line, maybe short of that. If he's at the 33, he's got a first down. But it's going to be close enough, I suspect, that the change will have to come all the way across the field. Two minutes and one second to play in the first half of the 41st annual Sugar Bowl Football Classic here in New Orleans. I tell you, that's what make coach, makes coaching nervous right there at heck of a business, Keith. When you move that football around, they're going to run it over there and measure the first, <laughs> for a first down down the Don't work. touch it. Don't yeah, touch it. Yeah, they've been moving it around. <laughs> ball boy ran over and gave him the new ball. Time is called by Florida. Nope. And it is not. Florida call time, he indicated. Yep. So time is taken here as the Nebraska Cornhuskers are about a foot short of their first down with 2.01 to go in the first half. So a crowd sitting in the Sugar Bowl surprised as Florida continues to lead 7-0. Fourth down and maybe a little more than a foot to go. Nebraska's going to get rid of the ball as Lessman comes in to punt, and Cowens goes deep for Florida. High, good hanging punt, fair catch call by Cowens back at his 29-yard line. There the Gators will have it 38 yards on the punt. 
Randy had a little bit of trailing wind that time that helped him some, and so here come the Gators now with a minute and 54 seconds to play in the first half. First down at their own 29. And Gaffney comes back at quarterback for Florida. I have the feeling, Barry, that uh, Doug Dick, you might have just put Fisher in on that last series to warm him up a little bit, get a taste of it in case he had to go to him later. I think they're going to try to score here, throw the ball away for reverse. You can hear a lot of popping and cracking as Green goes from the 29 out to about the 34 for five yards on the play. And he got out of bounds to stop the clock at 147 to go in the first half. Of course, Nebraska will be laying off here, Keith, but I, I would think uh, they'll take a shot at this, try the deep route, streak route, fly route here, post something, two wide outs. They're using a the flanker set to bring in the halfback over two wide outs. Richards, the wise man, they go back into the middle of Green, and boy, I tell you, there was a solid hit as Green tried to cut it back over the left guard. And number 91, Ron Pruitt, from Compton, California, really popped him. John McKay, the head coach of the Southern California Trojans. And O.J. Simpson will be joining me at the Hula Bowl on Saturday at 4 Eastern time on ABC's Wide World of Sports on most of these ABC stations. Gaffney gets it off. Pass is complete to McGriff, the little speedster. He goes back the other way and takes it to the 31-yard line. If he'd have stayed on his feet and taken it out of bounds, he'd have stopped the clock and picked up a little more yardage. He gained 35 on that one. You know, this guy's only five foot nine here, Keith, and was a walk-on in Florida, and he leads the Southeastern Conference with 36 reception. A wishbone receiver leads the, the, the Southeastern Conference and the pass receiver. Fine run catch by him here. Puts it three-point range, Keith. It's Green poking it in the middle from the 31 to the 28, maybe the 27, and it's uh, Dubose, it was, carrying the ball. Fullback, and I'm looking to see Florida with two more timeouts remaining. Nebraska with all three of theirs remaining. Or two remaining. Two remaining. So the full board draw. And a board, Terry. <laughs> Doug Dickey on the sidelines with his quarterback, Don Gaffney. This is a time where... Young men test themselves in that department called poise. Coaches too, huh, Barry? Yeah, we get uh, get a, we get a test pretty good every now and then. I had one at Nebraska this year. We fumbled a kickoff. Uh, they're leading 14 to seven, and Elvis Peacock fumbles the ball on the 15 yard line, and we're facing 21 to seven in the third quarter. That'll test you. But they didn't get. We took the drive 180, got it 14, 14 to one. 50 seconds to go in the first half, and Gaffney coming back into the huddle now. 1976 Olympics will soon capture the attention of the world, and America's very finest athletes will be competing as members of the U.S. Olympic team. Here's how every American can help. Send $5 to the U.S. Olympic Committee, Box 1976, Cathedral Station, Boston, Massachusetts, 02118. All right. It is second down and six yards to go as Gaffney back throws. He's got a man, McGriff. It's knocked away at the very last second by Jim Burrow. You bet he made a super play. Good gosh. Crossing route to McGriff again. The five foot nine, 160 pound walk on. Crosses the field in a deep crossing route. And you'll see Burrow. That's a touchdown right here. He's going to throw it in there. Here's Burrow picking him up, coming across, steps in front of him. Lays out, great play. That's on the three-yard line and catches that. It is third down and seven yards to go, and they pick it up the middle with Dubos to pull back down to the ten-yard line. And 39 seconds to play in the first half. 17-yard gallop on the play, and the man who led it was the center, Jimmy Kynes, who got off the snap of the ball and really opened that door. That was a great run by Dubose. I tell you, he doesn't look as big as he runs. He's 218-pound junior, but he'd have run over people that time. The kind of fullback you need in the wishbone. Some big guy can hammer up inside and get that tough yardage, and yet have the speed and the quickness to break the long run. A few of those guys around. All right, Florida has now spent its last timeout. Gators have no more remaining, only 39 seconds to play, so they've got time for maybe two plays before they go for three. They lead seven to nothing. Four turnovers have hobbled the Cornhuskers in the first half. 
There's an old adage around the game of football. You turn it over six times, and you're lucky if you leave with your shirt. Well, you know, even with the turnovers, uh, you can't take anything away from Florida, Keith, because uh, I think the score would be what it is right now without the turnovers, the way they've played. Florida's played outstanding the entire first half, and I've been very impressed with them. I didn't think they could play that way against Nebraska, but to tell you the truth, not just because I coach in the Big A Conference, too. Uh, I've been extremely impressed with them. All right, Gaffney is coming back to the field of play. He's probably coming with a couple of plays. Here he might call a couple in the huddle. Might try to go with the second play with no huddle. The football is marked down for the record at the 11-yard line. First down for Florida at the Nebraska 11. Only 39 ticks remaining on the clock in the first half. Break the wishbone and swing slot trip formation. Green is wide to the right. Gaffney gets away from one. He's got McGriff in the end zone. If he can find him, he can't do it. Down he goes all the way back at the 23-yard line, and it was Mike Fultz, number 72. <laughs> 15, 14. They got no more timeouts remaining. It's a 40-yard field goal. Now, instead of having a chip shot, they've got to go 40 yards. Posey's got it up in the air. It's good. Two seconds left. So David Posey nails a field goal from 40 yards out and only two seconds to play in the first half. And Florida jumps to a 10 to nothing lead. You know, on that last play, they tackled Gaffney too soon. I think they let him scramble a little bit more. Keith and Clock would have run. Watch what might have been on that last play. Darby, 88, is the tight end. He's the one that caught that long pass earlier. Defensive He's back fell down. Sure. Wide open. Wide open. But he had people harassing him. He had to scramble. And uh, McGriff on the other side had gone to the post and then gone, come back to the right corner, and he was free. He's open that whole time. <laughs> Everybody was trying to get the quarterback down. That's right. All right. Posey rolls it on the ground with time gone. The play continues as Tony Davis brings it back up to the 49-yard line. And the first half of play is over at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. And we have a surprise at halftime. The University of Florida Gators lead the Nebraska Cornhuskers 10 to nothing. Here's Jim Lampley. Coach Doug Dickey of the Florida Gators, you're up 10 to nothing, and you probably controlled the game even more completely than that. I think you have to be pleased. Well, we've had great field position, Jim, and our defense has uh, played extremely well so far and not giving up any big plays, and if we can just keep that going, we'll be all right. You said earlier in the week that the key to stopping their offense was to hold them to very short yardage on first down. Have you been successful? Well, we've done pretty well at that, yes. We brought up third down along uh, quite a number of times, and I think we've got to continue to do that to stop the drives. The three interceptions would seem to show that you're reading their short passing game very well. Well, we've had some, uh, I think, some great individual execution there. Preston Kendricks uh, jumped up twice and uh, caught that quick shot that Tom um, throws, and I hope we can keep on. What worries you? Anything? Well, uh, of course, we haven't had any adversity to overcome yet, and uh, if we win the game, we're going to have to overcome some somewhere down the line and make a long drive in this game. Good luck. Thank, Thank you very much, Coach. The Sugar Bowl is brought to you by ABC Sports. We'll be back with more right after this. The 41st Annual Sugar Bowl Football Classic featuring Nebraska and Florida is being brought to you by Chevrolet. You're invited to see Chevy's lineup for 1975 at your Chevy dealers now. Chevrolet makes sense for America. And by Gillette, makers of the Gillette Track 2, two-bladed shaving system, the closest thing to a perfect shave. And by General Motors, maker of Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac, who want you to drive what you like and like what you drive. We'll be back in the field area to see the University of Nebraska and the University of Florida marching bands in just a moment. But first, I think we should have a comment, an observation from the head football coach at the University of Oklahoma, Barry Switzer. You've said now that you've been most impressed with Florida. I'm very surprised, Keith. You know, it's not supposed to be this way. You know, they're a two-touchdown favorite, Nebraska going in the ball game, and 
Florida has played extremely well. I know Doug Dickey's proud of the way his team's performed. He's had great field position, as he said a minute ago, but uh, they've played extremely well, and I think that uh, Nebraska's had some adversity. Four turnovers. Nebraska's had one. They say these things even them out, but they're going to have to come in a hurry in the next 30 minutes because Nebraska's going to need some help, I believe. Well, now, it, it has not uh, been a matter of uh, anybody overpowering anybody from a manpower uh, point of view. I thought perhaps that Nebraska just might be physically stronger than Florida, but that has not been the case. Well, they haven't been able to throw the football. Nebraska hadn't got the big play. They've got to have the big play in the passing game. And their passing game is so off tonight, the first 30 minutes of this ball game, that they haven't been able to. They've had poor field position. They've started every time to nearly 80 yards to go, and, and they've had something happen, some turnover. You only get the ball about 12, 13 times in the ball game, and they've already had four turnovers in the first half, and you only get it six or seven times in the first half. So uh, they've got to stop this. They're Florida doesn't need any help. <laughs> Well, I tell you, one of the early in that uh, ball game in the first quarter when Tony Green, that freshman halfback, number 33, went in for the touchdown from 21 yards. And that was an impressive play. Yeah, really, you can tell the guy's got some speed here. He bounces to the outside. He's got 4-5 speed. They're really high on this guy. He's, uh, you can tell he can motor here. They got, they got the angle on him. Here's Kairos, 18, got the angle. He ain't got enough speed. Angle doesn't do you good if you ain't got any speed, Keith. That's a fine play. And then they kept their uh, cool and, and got three more points with only two ticks remaining on the clock. The lead at halftime, 10 to nothing. Now, what about the second half? What is uh, Nebraska going to have to do outside of get that ball successfully through the air? Well, I tell you, they're going to have to get it all together this half. I think, it, you know, Nebraska came out in the ball game trying to throw the football. They threw them first and second down a lot of times, and then they got such poor field position, they tried to rush the ball. They tried to come at it and assault them, and they had some success, but they had a turnover. They put it on the ground. They had one good drive. They uh, Westbrook broke the reverse and they look like they finally get four down zone about the 25-yard line. Might score there, but they have a turnover, and uh, they've killed themselves, and they, they're going to have to stop this. They've got to have some success throwing the football, and uh, i tell you one thing, they're going to have to block Florida, but they haven't blocked them so far. The only play they've been able to have success with at all is the pitch sweep and slot and the tight end. They haven't been able to run up inside. Is it really true you're going to rent that coat when you get through it? <laughs> I think I can take it back with me. They're, they're closed tomorrow, so I don't know what to do with it. What I do, take it back to Oklahoma? All right, Barry Switzer of Oklahoma. Now a word about what's coming up on the American Sportsman. On the field here at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans at halftime, our score is 10-0 Florida leading Nebraska, and you're looking at the old guard, Fife and Drum Corps, organized in 1960. The uniforms, instruments, drill, and music authentic with those of the Revolutionary Period. Drum major, you'll note, wearing a large fur and leather helmet called the Light Infantryman's Cap. There is a badge of distinction, an 18th century weapon, and so on and so forth. Now, all of these gentlemen are out of the Old Guard, 1st Battalion, 3rd United States Infantry at Fort Myer, Virginia. and drum corps moving off the field a very colorful group well drilled in the meantime there was a young individual who got caught in a circumstance he did not appreciate just moments ago fortunately for him he had the wherewithal to flee and he did so with a great deal of passion and quickness <laughs> and scored he's gone all right now we move on to the next phase of the halftime spectacular here at the Sugar Bowl. This will feature the University of Nebraska marching band. That's Diane Tangerman from Omaha. She is the drum major. And the Nebraska band under the direction of Jack Snyder. The new year. 
And so the University of Nebraska marching band, the Cornhusker, look into 2001 for their first music. Promises, promises. On a New Year's Eve, how about the sounds of Philadelphia? Sugar Bowl would ever be complete without this music. And it'll feature this Diane Tankerman.
University of Nebraska Cornhusker Marching Band under what amounts to almost full moon here in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. And our score at halftime, the Florida Gators 10, the Nebraska Cornhuskers nothing. Some of the folks who have made their way from the rather cold country of Nebraska feel that way about it, I would think, because the temperature has been in the low 80s for the last couple of days. We'll be right back. This is Jim McKay. ABC's Wide World of Sports travels across the Pacific to the land of swaying palm trees, tropical breezes, and sweet Leilani for the 1975 edition of the Hula Bowl. Outstanding senior collegiate football players, including the man who broke all of O.J. Simpson's rushing records at USC, Anthony Davis, will be featured in this East against West All-Star Classic. That's ABC's Wide World of Sports, live by satellite from Honolulu, this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, over most of these ABC stations. Now on the field, here at the Sugar Bowl... The University of Florida Gator Band. Frank B. Wicks, director of band. Assistant director is Gary Langford. Steve Heitzelman is the graduate assistant. Henry McLean, the drum major, Susan Waller. Captains the Gatorade Corps. And Renny McKissick is the feature twirler. The Florida Gator Band moves on to the British 8th March. And after this will come all kinds of music that you'll recognize instantly as having been made right here in this old city. I'm always a little bit reluctant to say that Jazz music in New Orleans has been composed because the best of it always just kind of happened. And to this day, when you walk down through Bourbon Street area, and through many regions of the city of New Orleans, you can still hear it. Same kind of a sound. Same kind of constant reach for something different in the way of jazz. And as the Florida Gator Band moves into its position under the British 8th March, that's the kind of music they'll be playing for you. Jazz favorites. music from the University of Florida Gator Band 
sports finale. A look at football to remember, I thought, one of the great stories out of this great old American game involving one of the fine young men that I ever met with it, Brian Piccolo. Remember Brian's song? Here is the title song from the music and the motion picture of the same name, Brian's song. Closes out the halftime performance, the University of Florida Gator Band. And they were tootling away very merrily and happily because their football team is on top here at halftime by a score of 10 to nothing over the Nebraska Cornhuskers who have been mistake ridden through the first half. Now the Sea Shanters Navy out of the band. U.S. Navy Band, the choral group from Washington, D.C is going to bring everybody up here in the Sugar Bowl for this song. Nebraska coach Tom Osborne. Tom, you've obviously had problems with turnovers in the first half. How much does the long layoff before a bowl game affect a team's time? Well, I don't know, Don. Obviously, it's affected ours. And, uh, we moved the ball at times fairly well, but we had bad field position. We had a lot of turnovers that contributed to that. And, of course, this is the thing we've got to eliminate. Also, it looks like we maybe weren't as ready to play as we thought we were. Uh, we feel we're going to win the football game. That's what our players think, and we'll just see who's right, Florida or us. Florida seems to be reading David Hum's passes very well. Why do you think they're able to do well, that? They've got a big defensive end that's playing real well right now. Dave, I think, has been a little slow throwing the ball a couple times. A couple times he didn't throw it very well. But uh, we can do better than what we have done. As you mentioned, except for the turnovers, you seemed able to move the ball well at times. Will we see many changes in your offense the second half? Uh, not too much. Okay, thanks a lot, Tom. Good luck. Keith? 
Thank you, Don Tollefson. This is Keith Jackson along with Coach Barry Switzer of the University of Oklahoma. And Jim Lampley is on the other sideline, dragging his laryngitis around. And we're a 10 0 ball game here with Florida leading at the end of 30 minutes of play. The Gators have just come back on the field wearing the blue. The Nebraska Cornhuskers with the turnovers at halftime. Shut out only for the second time in the season. Oklahoma State was the only other team ahead of scoreless at halftime. And there are the statistics. And the total yards now beginning to even up a little bit more. That's because Florida was unable to get anything real serious going in the second quarter. I was amazed that the Nebraska has outrushed uh, Florida in the ballgame. I didn't have that impression. But the statistic, Keith, that kills the Nebraska right now, they've thrown 11 passes. They've had uh, only two complete for 16 yards and right. three interceptions. All right, let's go back quickly to Don. I spent halftime in the Nebraska locker room with the team, and the mood was one of quiet analysis. There weren't a lot of emotional outpourings, not a lot of fiery speeches. Coach Tom Osborne feels that his team can move the ball in Florida. He feels that we'll be able to physically move them out, and if they can just stop the turnovers, he's sure they can put more than 10 points on the board in this second half. Keith? All right. Moon is still shining. We thought for a while, just about uh, 5, 5.30 this afternoon, we might get some rain, but obviously the rain threat is gone now as the sky is clear and the temperature remains around the 70-degree mark. Very comfortable evening in New Orleans, Louisiana. Mike Coyle is going to kick it off for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. He's a junior out of Omaha. Going deep for Florida will be number 33, Tony Green, and number 27, Henry Davis. Green is on the... Left side there, and Davis is on the right side. Davis is a sophomore out of Panama City. And, of course, Tony Green, who scored the Florida touchdown on a 21-yard run in the first quarter, is a 180-pound freshman out of Sarasota. Along the front, Florida will open up as they did to start the game with McGriff, the wide receiver. And the rest of them reads Parker, Stanfield, Kynes, Lawless, Williams, Darby in that order from left to right. Darby was most impressive as a tight end in the first half and particularly so on that long, one long pass he caught. The backfield expected to be Gaffney, Green, Richards, and Dubose. All right, here's Coyle's kickoff. It's Green at the nine. Oh, almost fell down. Penalty flagged down. Penalty flag thrown over here on the near sideline at about the 25-yard line. The tackle by number 83, Steve Weiser, and number 47, Jim Belka of Nebraska. So let's see what the penalty situation is as the official comes along to pick up this flag. A return by Green, where he almost stumbled and fell inside his 10-yard line. He got back to about the 17. And we'll see what the call is and how deep it backs the Gators. Looks like it might back them halfway because I suspect there might have been a clip over here. They play good defense right now, Keith. They've got the chance to get the best field position they've had since the first quarter of the ball game. They can keep you from making a first here. Force the punt. They've got a chance to maybe get in that four down zone with one first and ten. All right, they back them up to the... Well, let's call it. The ball is outside the ten-yard line, but it's pretty close to that ten-yard stripe, and that's where we're going to start them, at the ten. Gaffney is the quarterback. Dubose the fullback. And Dubose brings the ball up from the 10 to about the 16-yard line. A good gain running behind the left side of the line, Williams and Lawless, and it was blocking below the waist. It's only the third time this season I've seen that call. We saw some blocking that play, too. I tell you, Florida is really doing a fine job of blocking up front in the offensive line. That's a gain of six, a little more than six, actually. It'll be a second down and a short four, and again, they go up the middle with it. And the gain is up to about the 22-yard line, and it should be a first down as Dubose, the fullback, hits in with authority, and here's Jim Lampley. No halftime visitor to the Florida locker room would have had any difficulty telling that the Gators were ahead. Coach Doug Dickey told them they weren't yet firmly in command of the ball game, but they could be if they came out and moved the ball well enough to score on this drive. He wants them to score now. Keith? All right, it's a first down for Florida. And again, the Gators keep it in the middle, moving from the 23-yard line where the first down was made up to the 25. Dubose, the fullback, again carrying the ball. He's got 52 yards now in the game. And he gets three on that one, a little more than three. 
Gaffney Keel this time coming around the corner, turns it in to the 31 yard line. He'll be two yards short of his first down as Tom Pate makes another tackle, and that's a double handful for Tom in the ball game. It looks like a play we run, Keith. You've got most of your folks back next year. We've got a quarterback, Steve Davis, and of course Joe Washington. I think it's the greatest running back in America back. We've got our, quite a few other people compliment him. Third down and a yard to go. At the 32-yard line, it's too close to full by. Oh, it is not either. It's Richard. As Gaffney faked me and several folks on that play, pitched it deep to Richards, and Richards turned it in for the first down. Crosses the 35-yard line. It may not give his progress to that point, however. He will, I believe, have the first down, and there's a penalty flag on the field. See it right there? Against Florida. And it's going to go against the Gators, no question about it. They're backing up. That's the first time we've seen that play, Keith, the true triple option with the flare block for the pitch back, the halfback on the option play, and we got the ball pitched the first time with the, in that series in the ball game. He's been leading the lead blocker for the quarterback run. Illegal procedure on it means somebody was moving too soon. Normally, that's what it means. So make it a third down and long now. Third down and six. Well, back at the 27 as Gaffney comes down the line, keeping the ball. Third and ten goes to the 32. Another penalty flag. He threw that 20 yards. Yeah, he sure did. So we'll see what this one is. We've had flags flying from the very beginning, haven't we? And Florida's been getting all the calls. So the Gators come out and start making some mistakes themselves to start the third quarter of play after being relatively mistake-free in the first half. Previous indication, uh, the earliest indication we had was a clip, and it looks like that's what it's going to be, too. Mm. So that'll back them up to the 17-yard line. Clip having occurred out around the 32. You watch number 56 for Florida in blue. John Lee about clips there. The nose guard. Good call. Jimmy Kynes the center. Man. Give it to DuBose, the fullback, and he comes back to the 30-yard line. Well, they've been around that 30-yard line for quite a while now, as DuBose continues to find some room to run up the middle. I tell you what they're doing. I'll tell you how they're doing it. Doing a great job of blocking inside. Florida has played extremely well in their offensive line tonight. DuBose is a good runner, but he's getting a lot of help up inside. But the succession of penalties bring it up to fourth down and two yards to go, and the Gators will punt. With Buster Morrison to do the kicking. The guy doesn't line up very deep. Oh, no, he, he, he does. He, he's just about seven yards back there. Yeah, he yards. looks like tight punt all night long. I guess it, they, know, they know what they're doing. 36 <laughs> yards on the kick, and uh, Burrow fair catching the ball for Nebraska back about the 35 yard line. And the Cornhuskers will open this way offensively. Doe forward, Bonus, Hegner, Crenshaw, and Moschinski with Pa, the wide man. And the backfield will be Hum. And it'll be O'Leary instead of Anthony Davis and Westbrook. O'Leary. And the junior from Port Washington, New York. Takes it from the 35 to the 42. Alvin Cowan shoved him out of bounds for Florida. Gain of seven. Pitch sweep to the tight end. Good play. Been the best play in the entire ball game, Keith. You know, they, they run that play a lot, uh, Barry Switzer, but they don't seem to run it as wide as some teams do. He runs almost a straight line. They kick out on the corner. They're trying to go inside the end. Second down and a short three yards to go. At the 42 for Nebraska, Florida leading 10 to nothing. O'Leary again. Tried to cut it back a little, and he's going to be short of his first down, I believe. About third and one, I believe. Two sweeps in a row. Number 78, Griffith for Florida, and Ortega, number 55, were the two men that jammed that play. They'll bring the change all the way across. Nebraska needs to do something here, Keith. They've got to get some momentum in the ball. It looks about six inches. Now it's more than a foot. Got a part of a foot. You got better eyes than that guy. <laughs> 
program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. 11.49 to go in the third quarter. The third down conversion reflected there. Nebraska needing they need about a foot. Maybe a bad more. 5-2 defense. O'Leary got a stumbling start, but carries through for the first down of the 47-yard line. They're playing on artificial turf here at the Sugar Bowl. And it's first down, Nebraska, at their own 47. Three runs in a row there, and they got a first down. Let's see if they come again. I believe they're going to try to salt and move the ball on the ground, Keith. Cornhuskers looking for their sixth consecutive bowl victory. Tom gives the ball to O'Leary and runs out of the hands of one tackler. Makes it up to the 49-yard line before he is brought down. Clint Griffith, number 52, and Vern Barber, 52. Where is hurt? He's limping back to huddle. Grip is 78. Florida has some size up at the defensive front. Griffith's 241. Green and nose guard 228. Daryl Carpenter 245. Barber, however, is 208. Not that big. Story on O'Leary so far in the ball game. Second down nine. They give him a yard on the preceding carry. Here's the ball. Bad pitch. O'Leary has to go chase it all the way back to the 35-yard line. It's just too hard a pitch uh, for O'Leary to handle there, Keith. I think Tom uh, has a little too much on it for him to handle. Fake the wing back trap, man, and option the eye back off it to the slot side. Number 90, Preston Kendrick. I bet they wish they'd kept that one in the book right there. Well, here's the big number 90 involved again. He's had a great ball game, Barry. No question about it. He's a great player, great athlete. Watch that number one fields come up in a hurry now. You'll see him get involved here right there. Monster man. Third down. They've got about a half mile to go. The ball is back just outside the 35-yard line. David Hum back to throw. Has time. Goes deep over the middle. Now intercepted. He had Mushinsky open and missed it. Cowens has it for Florida. Gators have the ball. First down, Nebraska 34-yard line. Four interceptions. He had Kuczynski, number 88, is tied in. Larry just couldn't reach it. And so, 9 minutes to go, third quarter. The Gators are on the prowl again. Let's have another look at that previous play. As David Hum had his intended receiver open and just wet missed it. They're playing too deep here. They're playing five short zone. And the tight end is open, but he laid the ball up, overthrows him here. He threw a high, soft lob pass. You see it go over the tight end. Fine interception here, and of course the fourth one of the ball game. Here come the Gators, first down at the Nebraska 34-yard line, leading 10 to nothing. Pitch back to Tony Green. He's down inside the 25 to about the 24. And it could be a first down. David Hum, in his career, 1974, for example, he's had four passes intercepted tonight during the whole season. He only had eight intercepted. During his career, he's only had a total of 36 intercepted. This is the worst that uh, David Hum has probably played in his career at Nebraska, and he's had a tremendous career. career. He's a great football player, Keith, and he's won a lot of football games for him, but that happens to you. Terry Luck, number 11, warming up on the sideline, so they may rest David on the next series. We'll see. It's just a shame to see what I think is a brilliant football player have such a bad night under such circumstances. They brought the change across the field. And uh, you did not hear the explosion of despair for naught because it's a first down as the Nebraska folks now beginning to hold their breath as Florida grinds it along from the 24 to Dubose. And he's down to the 20, maybe inside the 20. There's Luck, Terry Luck. There's a youngster who's had some injury troubles in Nebraska. A lot of people thought he was going to be a tremendous football player. But Terry Luck's had some bad luck. Yep. Three knee operations. I'd call that bad luck. Second down and six. It's great pursuit with Nebraska there. They're going to have to dig in right here because they're in trouble. I'm Osborne walking the sidelines. Tom Pate again involved in that stop along with George Kairos, the safety. 
Florida backfield is Green, 33, Gaffney, 8, Richards, James Richards, 31, and Jimmy Dubose, number 35. I think that Dubose has been, been a surprise in this ballgame, Barry. He's helped. He's made big plays when they needed him. He nearly made a long third and 18 a while ago. Came up two yards short. He's picked up. Six, six, formation. 69 yards so far. Here's the handoff to Tony Green. Gets slides around the corner. Look out! Touchdown! Great run! Oh. An absolutely spectacular run! Don't do that. That's a penalty. Yeah, you almost threw that ball in the stand. He was either going to spike it or throw it in the stand. <laughs> That's a great run. He's just a freshman. Sarasota, Florida. Oh, my goodness. That was absolutely an incredible effort by Tony Green. 18-yard run. I don't know how in the world he stayed on inbounds, but he did. They broke their formation on that play, Keith. They had two wide out to the left of the wide side of the field, and they had him lined up in the flanker, and they ran a halfback reverse. Here it is. Florida's going for two. They give it away to Richards. And he, stepped no out of, to he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, out of bounds. Oh, now we get the call. Oh. So we take away that touchdown that we had so deliriously called there for a moment and bring it back to the six. Where are they going to put it? Seven yard line. He lost yardage on that play. He went out at the five, they say. We'll have a look at that run in a moment as soon as we have a chance. Now they back it up to the seventh where it's second down and goal to go. Here's Green again. Hunting and he goes to the one. Somebody caught him by the shirt tail and jerked him backwards. Third and goal at the one. I bet they don't throw, Keith. I certainly wouldn't think so, the way they're blowing holes up front. That's the power sweep into the tight end side. They gave it to the right guy. Now we'll get a time here by Florida. So, we've got a timeout with seven minutes and 58 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. And Florida leading 10 nothing, looking for some more. The nose of the football is just about touching the Nebraska one-yard line. And the Huskers are just going to stuff everybody right in the middle and try to hold on here. And you've got to figure that's where Florida's going to go. On third down and goal to go. Quarterback asked uh, Earl Shostrom for quiet, I believe, here. He couldn't hear the cadence. Let's watch that run now by Green. See if we can pick up where he stepped out. Pull both guards. They had three backs lined up the left side and they run a halfback reverse. He steps out right here, Keith. I believe you see it. It's a good call by the official. You see his right foot go out on the five yard line, about the four and a half yard line right there. But he makes a great run. He tight ropes down the sidelines and gets it in the end zone. I thought he'd score. All right, here we go. Third down, goal to go from just outside the one. New goal. Oh, didn't make it. I don't believe. Great defensive play by the whole front of the Nebraska line there. Linebackers made a fine play. Nelson and Mons in particular. Wonder Mons came right in and stuck him right in the gizzard and would not give an inch. Yeah, there you see well, the I tell you what, you don't... Uh, <laughs> I, I'd run a play they can't run. I'd turn hand it to Joe Washington here. They don't have Joe Washington, but I bet they turn hand it to Green. What do you say? Got to go for it. But do you go straight or do you slant it? It's Richards. Didn't oh. make it. The Busca holds him. Jim Burrow, number two. Got his man. Well, that's a great play. <laughs> Busca. We talk about poor field position, but they'll take it right there, Keith. Yes, sir. Just Reed. get the football. 99 and a half minutes to go. So from what appeared to be an apparent touchdown, which would have given Florida a big, big lead in the third quarter, Tony Green detected stepping on the sidelines. And now the Cornhuskers have it. Florida has had the ball at the Nebraska 34, the 37, the 34, and they have failed to produce points out of those points of possession. That's an important thing to remember. Hold on to that football, Tony Davis. He's going for Watch out. They whistled him down. They whistled him dead, and he's hollering up a storm about it. Terry Luck is in the ball game at quarterback for Nebraska, and it looked like Davis might pop out of there and go hunting. Keith, we had had a foot race right then. Davis will fool you. He's quicker than you think. Here's that fourth down play. Watch it. Florida was only a foot away from scoring. They decided to go wide to Richards. To the split inside. 
pitched the ball, came up a yard short. Jimmy Burrow, number two, made the stop. All right, the football now is out at the seven yard line. Nebraska's ball. Terry Luck, number 11, the quarterback. He gives it to Monty Anthony, the freshman tailback or the eye back and he doesn't get much on the play as he surges up maybe to the nine yard line last play with the fullback leading on the linebacker they picked up short yardage here well that's a heck of a turnaround you know Barry from the standpoint of having that might turn out to be the play that haunts one of these well the haunt, Florida's the only one that's got to haunt but the well, risk of we're going to find out in the next few plays whether it will really Nebraska takes takes the bullet. And does something with it which certain will all right, it's third down, about a yard and a half for the first down at the nine. It's Anthony. He's got the first down as he gets it up to the 20, 21 yard line. Game 12. Cowens, the tackle. You know, they ran the pitch sweep into the tight end that time, Keith, and, the, and Florida was anticipating it. The linebackers uh, cheated over Ortega at the last second, cheated over, and tried to run through. You'll see him move to the outside right here. See Cameron, Cameron on the play. Excuse me, Cameron. Both played at the same high school. Both Gable, Florida. All right, first down, Nebraska. Just outside the 21. And luck gives to Tony Davis. And they bang it in the middle for about three yards. Here's Don Tollison. This year, the guest of honor at the Sugar Bowl basketball tournament was a man who, during his 42 years at the University of Kentucky, won more games than anyone else in the history of college basketball. Adolph Ruff, over all those years, did you have a chance to watch many football games? Oh, yes. I attended every football game that the university played. I made many of the trips through the team away from home. I got to see a lot of them, yes. Postseason playoffs have generated so much enthusiasm, enthusiasm in college basketball. Would you like to see the same kind of system in college football? Ah, uh, yes, yes, I would. I like to play off. Yes, I would. I tell you, uh, this uh, uh, Sugar Bowl tournament uh, has done a wonderful thing for college basketball, and I'd like to see the same thing uh, in uh, football uh, the way we have in basketball. We had four great teams down here this year, and I'd like to see uh, uh, the same great teams come down here that used to come down here. Adolph, you brought a lot of excitement to a lot of sports fans, and I want to congratulate you. Thank you. I've had a lot of fun doing it, and uh, I enjoyed every bit of them. Great. Thank you. Keith? All right, Monty Anthony dropped for a loss. Ball now and we'll back gives it off to Tony Davis. And Davis is all the way out across the 30 to the 34-yard line. The 33-yard line, they'll put it down for 11 yards, and it's a Nebraska first down. So suddenly Tony Davis, with Terry Luck in there at quarterback, becomes the man of the moment for Nebraska. They've come a long way already, Chris. Chris, <laughs> at least it's ABC. <laughs> oh. Three minutes and 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. Florida with a golden opportunity getting away from them on a brilliant goal line stand by Nebraska. Now Nebraska starting to move. Terry Luck back to throw his first effort. He goes short. The pass bounces in front of the intended receiver. Incomplete. It was Rich Ball. You know, David might uh, have lost confidence in his passing game, Keith. You know, that's uh, was a poorly thrown ball. He underthrew him by 10 yards. He's not that kind of quarterback. He's a fine quarterback, but he just got that cold night. Well, hum on the night before he left in favor of Luck. Two out of 12 for 16 yards and four interceptions. Anthony, the tailback. Davis, the fullback. To the Westbrook on that little reverse inside, almost fumbling away, gets it back, and it's a first down to Nebraska at the Florida 49. At least he's consistent. He's run it twice, broken it twice, and he's fumbled both times. But he got that one back, Keith. Here's another look at it. Here he goes on the reverse. Fine job. Great block of the tight end coming across on the linebacker. And of course, he was able to catch the ball and fumble in midair. The deepest drive Nebraska's had was to the Florida 45 before they gave up the ball. It gave it up on a fumble on that particular occasion. Here's Luck coming down the line on the option, turns it in. He's inside the 45 to about the 44. 
Vernon Barber the stop for the Gators at 2.55 to play in the third quarter. Second five, it's a big play. Good yardage on first and ten. They got control of it right now. I wonder if, uh, well, I'll tell you, if Nebraska takes it 99 and a half yards for a touchdown, look out. We'll have us a ball game on it. Anthony, he's got two to the 42. You know, I wonder if they're automatic in that. You know, the secondary of Florida is rolling up at the last minute to the wide side of the field, Keith. They're cheating over, and the corner's loosening some, the safety moving over, and I wonder if maybe they're not automatic into that play. I tell you, it's a Johnny hot spot for Terry Luck to be thrust into, though, but he's handled his assignment very well, hasn't he? Right. All plays except one have been on the ground. Third down. And about three from the 42 of Florida. It's Davis. He's got it, I believe. Tony's got the first down. I believe that was a trap. Keith. Uh... They stop the clock, ask for the chop. They don't either. They take a good look and wave first down. All right, a minute and 41 to go in the third quarter. And let's talk about the psychology of the moment uh, here with Barry Switzer, uh, head man of the Oklahoma Sooners. You've got a brand new quarterback in there, and Terry Luck. You suddenly stop the other team when it seemed sure they'd score, and now you're on the move yourself. What can this do to a football team, all right? Well, I tell you, football is momentum. Of course, no question right now, if they take this in, Nebraska will have it and have a lot of it. And only being behind three points is explosive. As they are, they've got a chance to, to beat anyone in the country. And, uh, but they haven't put the seven on the board. They've had a long, impressive drive right now. They've controlled the football. Florida's still playing good defense, but, uh, you know, they've still got 35 yards to go. And anything can happen. But if they get it in, we're going to see a heck of a football game. The football is resting at the 36-yard line of Florida. It is second down and seven for Nebraska. Great formation. Inside, of, inside a minute to go in the third quarter. That's Davis. He's got a first down as he bullies it down to the 24-yard line. Alvin Cowens dragged him down. 12-yard gain, and the Huskers keep moving it on the ground. I think that Tony took that personal in. I think he's mad. He put that guy right in the mouth. That guy's a competitor. He's 5'11". He's a 214-pound junior. He is from Tecumseh. And there was never any doubt in his mind where he was going to go to college. Tecumseh, Oklahoma, or Nebraska? <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska. First down, Huskers at the 24 of Florida. It's Davis oh. again. And just absolutely tearing his way through behind the block of Bonis and Allward. Well, they've already come 80-something yards, Keith. 12-yard pickup for Tony Davis. The Cornhuskers have a first down just inside the Florida 13-yard line. We'll take that guy out there unless he's hurt. Equipment problem. Tony Davis on the sideline. Higgs is the fullback replacing it with three, two, one second to play. Time expires in the third quarter. So we've got 15 minutes of football to play here at the Sugar Bowl. And Florida still leads it 10 to nothing. Well, here we go to the final 15 minutes of this Sugar Bowl game, the 41st football classic in New Orleans, Nebraska, with a football. First down, just inside the Florida 13-yard line. What a dramatic swing we've had in the closing moments of the third quarter. And now with 15 minutes to go, let's see what happens. Terry Luck is now in at quarterback for Nebraska. Here's the pitch to Monty Anthony. He's caught. At about the 11-yard line and shoved back. 78 Griffith is there. 
backside pursuit got him right there. I thought they were going to make more on the play. Looks like he had a lot of good blockers in front of him then, Keith. And uh, backside pursuit number 78 made the play. David Hum standing on the sidelines had a frustrating night by far the worst of his career. And Terry Luck now has moved the Nebraska football team from one half yard away from his own goal line down to the 11 yard line where it is second down and eight yards to go and he handed inside to the fullback and Gary Higgs pounds along George Davis back in Tony Davis having had some equipment repair is back in there and this drive really has belonged to Davis. Terry Luck is having some good luck right now. He's uh, coming off three knee operations, being a second-team quarterback, and coming in in a situation that I know is a second-teamer. I wouldn't want to go out there right. and have to try to take a team from behind 10 points, 99 yards. But he has done a tremendous job. Let's see if he can do it go all the way. So far, they've had 16 plays, used 8 minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Luck coming down the line, turns inside, dives. He's close to his first down. He took it from just outside the six. Fine play on the option. Here comes the fullback, and tight end in the ball game. We have two tight ends, I believe. They took the wing, taking the wing back out. The ball will probably go with two high formation, two tight ends here on short. First and ten. First and goal. Ball is just outside the three, or the two, rather. Seven first downs of the drive, 16 plays, eight minutes plus in controlling the ball, and first and goal just outside the two. Anthony! Touchdown! Touchdown! You have to go all the way back into the third quarter for this story. Florida. Looked like they had a touchdown as Green came up with a spectacular run. Everybody here thought it was a touchdown. They didn't get it. Nebraska held him and moved 99 and a half yards for the touchdown. And here's another look as Anthony goes over the top for the six. And the Huskers are finally on the board. You talk about momentum now, Keith. You're going to see how Nebraska plays defense. Coyle. The point. It's good. 13 minutes and 24 seconds to play in the football game. And what a game we got going now as Florida leads Nebraska by three. On that touchdown drive of 99 plus yards, 18 plays, 8 minutes and 46 seconds, seven first downs. Anthony scoring it, but Tony Davis picked up 52 of those 99 yards, and he was off the field to play for two plays in the drive. He's got them all on the ground. Here's the kick. It goes to Tony Green, who fumbles at the 10, falls down at the 12, and look out. Here is a football team from Lincoln, Nebraska, that's been through the Brambles in many, many cases, looking for their sixth consecutive bowl victory. Now, and right here, Keith, will determine the momentum factor in the ball game. Nebraska can play great defense right here, stop them, which they haven't been able to do without a first and 10, force the punt, Nebraska is coming back at you. You know, Tom Osborne said they believe they can win. They're winners. They've got a great tradition at the University of Nebraska. They've kept their poise. They demonstrated that in the last series. Gaffney, the quarterback, gives to Dubose over the right side. He takes it from the 12 to the 16-yard line. He picked up four yards, maybe a little more. John Lee and Ron Pruitt made the tackle for Nebraska. Their third quarter statistics now begin to swing in favor, more uh, certainly in rushing it does, but very close now in total yardage. Only 11 yards separating them. A handoff to the fullback, and he's hammered as he comes up to the 19-yard line. No, make it the 18-yard line. He's got to go to just beyond the 21 for the first down. In the middle of the fracas, John Lee, 6-9. Fine play by Lee here. He slanted to the right, and they happened to run the fullback play. He tried to cut back on him, but he made the play. It's a third and three here. This is the biggest play of the ball game right now for Nebraska. Gaffney gives to Green. He got him. Cut the football. Mark Heidorf and Tom Pate ran him out of bounds. And Florida's got to cough it up now and give Nebraska field position. 
can't believe that's the first time in a long time that Keith that uh, Nebraska's been able to stop him without a first and ten and force a punt. That's a big play for him. Let's see if we can move the ball on offense, Nebraska. Buster Morrison needs a big kick here. Got a little bit of wind in his back. Not much. Ball hangs. Burrow takes it at the 43. Slides out of bounds at the Florida 49-yard line. They back him up around the 50. 38-yard front, 8-yard return. And Florida 10, Nebraska 7. We'll be right back. You see reflected there on your television screen the 10-year history of Nebraska with 91 wins. That's more than any other team in the country has won. So these guys know what it's all about. The whole organization at Nebraska knows how to win. And success breeds success in so many cases. Let's see what Florida can do now. The Gators are up against them. They lead by three, but here comes Nebraska. And they stay with their primary tool in that long touchdown march, Tony Davis. As Terry Luck remains at the quarterback position. They were in the, <coughs> the spread formation that time, Keith. I think maybe they went to it feeling like they'll soften up in the middle, but they ran the face play to the fullback. Made very little yardage. Davis gained two. O'Leary comes in at the eye back position, but O'Leary now moves up into a wing on the left side. Give it to O'Leary on that counter inside, and he slices in over the right side behind Crenshaw and Heckner, and he reaches the 43 yard line before they get him. So now Nebraska is going to be looking at third down and about four. You think they'll go for it fourth down? Short here, Keith. Third and four. I wouldn't think Third so. Third and long four. I wouldn't think so. Depends on how short it is. It'll be inside the 40. 11 minutes, I believe they kick it. Alito, wide to the left. O'Leary. <laughs> they got him at about the 41. They got a decision to make. They're going to be about yard and a half from the first down. Just shy of the 40. Sammy Green made that tackle for Florida. Ten minutes. Sammy Green. Ten minutes and 30 seconds to play in the football game. They got the better part of two yards, Barry. Fourth and two. They, you know, right up inside there where the where the ball games are won in the offensive and defensive line. They've got a heck of a battle going on with Barnes and Sammy Green, the finals guard of Florida. And they're going to go for it on fourth and a short two. The crowd comes up. Anthony! He's got it. He's got the first down for Nebraska. Oh, I'm glad him up here stayed on the sideline. <laughs> no, I don't really mean that. I wish we were playing. I tell oh. you, Wayne Fields, the monster man for Florida, came flying in trying to plug that hole, and he got there just a fraction late. They had to do a good job of blocking them because Florida was stacked up inside. They had nine people right up on the line of scrimmage, and they just uh, butted them out of there for two yards and got the first. At the Florida 38-yard line, first down, Cornhusker. <laughs> Davis, that play. Davis down to the 32-yard line. So he goes from the 38 to the 32 for a big six-yard gain on the first down play. And for those of you who have not heard it on a New Year's Eve, Catfish Hunter is a wealthy man. He signed five years with the New York Yankees for a reported $3.7 million total package. So happy New Year. Jim, now go and do some serious hunting. Second down, four yards to go at the 32-yard line of Florida. The Cornhuskers are on the move, bidding for the lead. It's Davis again. And Tony Davis is playing football like a wild man here in the second half. He gained 10 yards. Boy, you think that guy's not a competitor? He's excited. He's fighting to win this football game. I wish we had him lining him up in the wishbone, hand him the ball about 30 times a game. I believe he can play all right there. Playing all right in this formation. We move inside nine minutes to go in a football game. Davis, 10 carries, 70 yards in this half alone. It's first down for the Cornhuskers at the Florida 22-yard line. Davis again. He gets.
gets a couple of yards before four or five blue shirts can drop him. They tried, excuse me, Keith. They tried to fake the pitch sweep to the tight end that side and then hand the ball off quick. Play their pullback off their uh, pitch sweep series. Remind you that four Eastern time this coming Saturday and over most of these ABC stations. The Hula Bowl from Honolulu, Hawaii. East and West. Great football players in that one. Second down and eight. Luck delivers the ball. And Gary is a Alvin Butler comes in and cuts the beat from under Higgs. There's a great play by that defensive corner. The lead block for Nebraska missed him, and he beat him to the outside and made a fine play. They're lucky they didn't even fumble the football right then. No gain on the play. It's third down and eight. Ball just short of the 20. And the clock continues to tick along. 7.35 to go in the game. Florida 10, Nebraska 7. What a dramatic turnaround we had. You think this will be Luck's second pass? Could be. Third and eight. Here come the getters, blitzing, he gets it off, it is not the side. Great play by Vernon Barber, number 52. The rush pressured him. If he was able to throw it over that linebacker, Westbrook would have been there, and I think we might have had a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Fourth down and eight. They've got to kick it and see if we can get a tie ball game. We've reflected back to what Tom Osborne said when he came out of the locker room, but we've also should remember what Doug Dickey said at the close of the first half when he said his team would have to overcome adversity. All right. Here is Mike Coyle, number 42, in trying to tie it up from 37 yards. He got it. That's one of those low shots. <laughs> Mike Coyle knocked a driving knuckleball through, and we're even at 10-10, 7-12 to play in the game. The Sugar Bowl is one of the classic bowl games, and Nebraska is honored to be playing in it. But this stadium could well be empty next year or the year after if we don't help the president and ourselves in saving our energy resources. All sports have joined President Ford's WEN campaign, and one way we can help is through saving fuel. Make use of carpools, buses, and public transportation when going to a game or to work. You'll find it saves fuel and saves money, and these days we need to. Well, the big red folks are happy. Oh, I'll tell you, they're dancing in the aisles, and here are the Cornhuskers kicking it off. The score is tied at 10-10, and it is Jim Richards returning it for Florida. Look out, he gets it all the way back to the 37-yard line, a 25-yard return before Tom Pate brings him down. And when all is said and done and this football game is over tonight, remember that name, Pate, because old Tom has played himself a heck of a ball game. Nebraska gives Florida another test here, Keith. The uh, last time Florida had the ball, it was the first time they had not made a first down since midway in the second quarter. They're going to give them a test right here. See how they do. All right, the Gators in the wishbone. The ball goes to Kubos, the fullback. And Lee, number 69, the middle guard, is right there to plug the hole. He got some help. And looking for the number of the other man. I believe Lee slanted to the weak side in the tight end and ran around and made the play from behind. It's a fine play by him. So Martin. Martin helped him out. So it's gain of about a yard on the play. And it's second down and nine. With six minutes and 35 seconds to play in the football game. And we're all even at 10-10. Oh, back to throw. Whips it to the sidelines to Green. Green's got two white shirts with him. Scoots along the sidelines and got quite a bit out of it, didn't he? He may have made a first down. The guy's got a little more quickness. People trying to hit him up over there. He did get a first down as he took the football out beyond the 47-yard line. So they move the chain to stop the clock at 6.13. I'd remind you, when your partying is done, you want to sit back and relax over the weekend, I can tell you right where to do it, right in front of your television set over most of these ABC stations. We start with the Hula Bowl on ABC's Wide World of Sports at 4 Eastern. The superstars begin on Sunday. Here 
Here comes Gaffney down the line, tries to turn it inside, carrying that football like a loaf of bread. That's a very good way to lose it. Great pursuit from Nebraska there on the option play. We got a bunch of white jerseys right to the football then. Well, it was a little scary, wasn't it? Heidorf was the man that got him, a senior out of Lock Crescenta, California. Yeah, I don't see any gain at all on the play. This ball is right on the 47-yard line. What's the draw play again? Break the formation. Second down and 10 for Florida. Uh oh. Darby, the tight end, jumped, and it'll be a procedure call here against Florida. The Superstars, first round of the men's preliminary competition begins on Sunday over most of these ABC stations at 2 Eastern, 1 Central, and Pacific time. We start off with the men. Then uh, we come back in two weeks on the 19th with women in competition from Houston. And we'll go back to the men's. We also have a super team competition, and you'll see celebrities. And the total prize money in the superstars this year for everybody, three quarter million dollars. Super teams made up of representatives, the World Series, and Super Bowl teams. And here's the handoff to Tony Green. The draw play. And the draw play doesn't work much, does it? They've had second success. down and 15. He gained about a yard. Yeah. Brinson, number 39 in the backfield now for Florida. Five minutes to play in a football game. Nebraska red hot. Turned the game around with a 99 and a half yard march. Culminating in the early moments of the fourth quarter. Gaffney trying to throw. Gets shirt tail. Runs out of his shirt. Gets called down. Up at the 49-yard line. He is short of the first down, and the Gators will have to give up the ball. He nearly he broke that one. He ran right out of his shirt, didn't he? I wonder if they got tear away jerseys. No, I did it. So the clock continues to go as Florida will punt in a 10-10 ball game. Buster Morrison, who stands very close to the line of scrimmage. Closer than most. Gets his kick off. Good hanging kick. Angle for the sidelines and knocks it out of bounds. He didn't get a whole lot on it. He had a lot of distance on it, but he knocked it out at about the 25-yard line. 4.08 to play in the game. We're even at 10. The Nebraska Cornhuskers. Have the football, first down at their own 25-yard line. Terry Luck comes in at quarterback, and Terry Luck has become quite a story in the second half of this football game for Nebraska. He is a junior, so he has a year to go, Mr. Barry Scripture of Oklahoma. Yeah, this kind of reminds you of last year in the Cotton Bowl when Nebraska played. Uh, Steve Runney came in for him and won the ball right. game. Florida defense now is going to be tested right here. Counter it back to Westbrook. The wing back, and he's got three, maybe four. Ortega, the tackle for Florida. We've got three minutes, 350. We've got a little, plenty of time to go score. They don't have to throw. Keep their poise. Come on, Come on, Come on, 340 to play in the football game. 10 10 time. Second down, six. Tony Davis is open and on the move. And there goes Tony. He goes 41 yards. First down, Nebraska at the Florida 31. Alvin Cowens brought him down. Not only has Terry Luck been a story in the second half, but so has Tony Davis. They fake the sweep again into the tight end, handed the fullback. It's a great run here for Tony Davis. Doesn't have great speed, but he's a fine runner. Very great competitor. Guy loves to win. In the second half, Davis has carried the ball 12 times for 112 yards. First down, Nebraska at the Florida 31. It's Anthony. Cuts it back to the 29-yard line for a two-yard pickup for the American Sportsman this Sunday, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, and Pacific time over most of these ABC stations. Robert Redford narrates a story about the Tundra Wolf. And on ABC's Wide World of Sports on 
this Sunday, the premier program offers the World Heavyweight Championship fight between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. Second down and eight yards to go. Nebraska, Florida, 29-yard line. It's Anthony again. He's to the 25-yard line. He picked up four, four and a half yards before Hutchison and Cameron make the tackle. Davis has gone out. He's on the sidelines right now. Tom Osborne, the Nebraska coach, with two minutes and 15 seconds to play in the game, calling time. There has never been a tie in the Sugar Bowl. We are even right now at 10-10 between Nebraska and Florida with 2.15 to go, and the Huskers are moving. The football is sitting at the Florida 25-yard line, just inside it. Third down and four in a 10-10 tie with two minutes and 15 seconds to play in the game. Terry Luck, the quarterback. He gets the ball to John O'Leary, runs it back in the middle. And he's short of the first down. He gets to about the 22. He'll be a yard, maybe a little more, from his first down. At this point, Coach Barry Switzer of Oklahoma, I would suggest Nebraska has established physical superiority. They've got the big play coming up here. You remember Florida's in a situation about like this a while ago on the one-yard line, fourth down and one. Nebraska calls timeout here, and they face the same situation. One minute and 53 seconds to play in the ball game. Here, the 41st Sugar Bowl football classic. Nebraska has one timeout remaining. Harry Luck gone to the sidelines to talk to Tom Osborne. The Professional Bowlers Tour begins its 14th year of live coverage on ABC television this Saturday from Alameda, California, the $60,000 ARC Alameda Open. And Dick Weber joins Chris Schenkel for the Professional Bowlers Tour this year on ABC. 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central, and 4 Pacific time over most of these ABC stations. I believe they're going to kick it, Keith. Well, it's fourth down. They have the better part of a yard and a half for the first down. So they're not going to risk not making the first down. Instead, we'll go for a 39-yard field goal. And Mike Coyle made a 37-yard field goal to tie the game. He kicks out of Lux hole. 39 yards. I think he's got it. He did. takes the lead, 13 to 10. A little different emotion on the sidelines now, isn't it? The white jerseys are happy and cheering. The blue ones have got the kisses to come with them now. Only a minute and 46 seconds to play, and Nebraska leads by three. Well, I'll tell you, it's been a spectacular football game. Florida, missing an opportunity to take a 17-0 lead, had Nebraska come pounding back 99 and a half yards, and now the Gators trail by three. Reverse. And it's Henry Davis on the reverse, and it does not work. Cletus Pillen, number 61, destroyed the attempted reverse by Florida and the Gators now with a minute and 42 seconds are in trouble at their 10 yard line here's the field goal kick by Coyle and look he didn't really make it with a whole lot of breathing room did he it counts so it counts right as long as it's inside it counts all right Gaffney being chased oh. tries to throw the ball and apparently Got his arm forward, trying to get it over to an eligible receiver, Jim Richards, number 31. And it goes as an incomplete pass. It was Ron Pruitt of Nebraska who put the pressure on him. Gaffney now is four out of eight in passing for 79 yards. I think they called him down on that, Keith. They moved the ball back second to about ten and a half. He was probably on the ground before he tried to pass. Looks like it. So he backed it up from the ten. To very close to the nine. Uh-oh. He runs away from the chase. Now he breaks it out. That guy can scramble. Gets it up to the 14. Clock running with a minute to play in the game. Florida has two timeouts remaining. He's going to try to get another playoff here. 
They've got Tony Green way wide to the left. Out of your picture. I thought they moved. Uh, Green up in the secondary was wide open, dropped the ball. Tony had it right in his hands with 43 seconds to play and dropped it. And Tony Davis of Nebraska has been announced as the most valuable player of the game. That's no surprise to the no Keith. Sir He's turned his second half around. That's the Nebraska I know this last 30 minutes, Keith. <laughs> Davis, 17 carries, 124 yards. And 112 of those yards in the second half on 12 carries. It is fourth down for Florida. They need six yards for a first down with 43 seconds to play. Gaffney will try to throw again. He goes to the short man. The pass is caught up at the 31-yard line by McGriff. That'll stop the clock as they move the chains up. 35 seconds to play in the football game. Gators trying to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set for a play without having to spend a timeout. 35 seconds. All right, that'll start the clock now. 30 seconds. After the throw. Can't get it off. Almost lost the football. With 21 seconds to play in the game, Florida calls time. And Gaffney needs a new shirt. So unless lightning really strikes here for the Florida Gators on second down and 15, Tom Osborne will go to a happy locker room with his Nebraska Cornhuskers having won the ball game 13-10. But they worked for it. Tony Davis might be the most valuable player in the ball game, Keith, but I think Mike Coles had something to do with it too. Two pressure field goals. And uh, I give somebody on that Nebraska coaching staff, perhaps it was Tom Osborne, perhaps it was some member of the staff who might have said, uh, let's keep it on the ground, let's take it to him, let's go at him the old-fashioned way, and that's exactly how they won the that's ball game. That's exactly right. They won it on the ground in the second half, rushing the football. They came out in the ball game trying to throw the football. In the second half, they had statistics like we usually have in a passing game. <laughs> they didn't complete a pass. They threw only three and had one intercepted. <laughs> Sounds like they're running the wishbone. Twenty-one seconds to play in this 41st Super Bowl football classic. It's been a good one. 13 to 10, Nebraska. They go into a deep pre-bit defense. Three-man rush got to The three-man rush led by John Lee, 69, Mike Fultz, 72. Down goes Gaffney. A clock running, 10 seconds remaining, and Florida spends its last timeout. Well, I tell you, we have talked, talk, talk about the offensive people consistently, and the big guys up front very seldom get the kind of credit deserved. But the people up in front on that Nebraska offensive line, now the defense has been pretty obvious here in the second half. But up front, it's been Dope, Allward, Bonis, Hegner, Crenshaw, Mushinsky, and Brad Jenkins in a tight end. Tony Davis carrying the ball in the second half, remarkable. 12 carries, 112 yards, 17 for the ball game and 124 yards. Davis can't do it by himself, no question about it, though he did rip and snort and tear when he got loose into that secondary. The Pro Bowlers Tour starts off the weekend on ABC and most of these ABC stations this coming weekend from Alameda, California, and this year, Dick Weber joins host Chris Schenkel for the Professional Bowlers Tour. And also on Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, we'll be in Hawaii for the Hula Bowl. And our airship, Goodyear Blimp, the Mayflower. Moving along over the Sugar Bowl, this may be the last play of the football game as Gaffney throws it as far as he can downfield, and it is picked off by Heidorf of Nebraska. Don't fumble the ball. And the ball game is over as Heidorf brings it all the way back to the Florida 33-yard line, and the Cornhuskers leap with joy as they defeat the Florida Gators 13-10. to 10. Chris, uh, Chris, <laughs> Keith, what a ball game. You think I'm excited, Keith? Hey, look at Nebraska. Not as nearly as excited as Nebraska. 
Well, that's a great victory for him. Down 10-0, come back to the second half. Two pressure field goals in the running of Tony Davis. Davis, the most valuable player, will receive his award momentarily from Marshall David, the chairman of the executive committee. The winning team trophy for the Cornhuskers will be presented by Cliff Kern, Jr., who is the president of the Midwinter Sports Association. It stages the Sugar Bowl here in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. We'd like to thank all of these gentlemen. Sam Cornsweet didn't take time to run them all down, but they've been most gracious to all of us. And Joe Katz, the executive director of the Sugar Bowl Classic, with Cliff Kern serving as the president. They made our stay most pleasant. We might have had Barry Switzer of Oklahoma as our guest commentator, and I'll see you in the Hula Bowl on Saturday. Right, uh, Keith, I leave tomorrow for the Hula Bowl, and you know, I'll get off the plane in Honolulu, and I'll not know the score of that game they play tomorrow night in Miami. Unless the pilots tell me. <laughs> I imagine that word will be passed around. I think I'll go up front and ask them if they heard the score. Okay, our final score here at the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana, on a warm, soft evening, 13 to 10. And for all of us at ABC Sports involved in our presentation of collegiate football and all of the events that are coming up for you in the first quarter of the year, the Professional Bowlers Tour, the American Sportsman, all of the entertainment factors that we have planned for you, we wish you the merriest of the holidays, a happy new year, and a most prosperous 1975. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. Tonight's coverage of the 41st Annual Sugar Bowl produced by Chuck Howard. Directed by Andy Sedaris. Our technical director, John Allen. Our associate producer, Dorrance Smith. Our associate director, Roger Goodman. And now this is Keith Jackson along with Barry Switzer, Jim Lampley, Don Tollefson saying so long from the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, Louisiana. Then provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. There is a new spirit, a new look in the print disguise. Catch the spirit of friendship service. Once again, the final score. Nebraska 13, Florida 10. The preceding presentation of ABC Sports recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.